On that car's voice. Oh man, so <laughs> I keep going, right? <laughs> She said, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. I like the nightlife better. I like the nightlife better. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. We can... Let's go. Alright. Is that good? That was pretty good. Yeah. It was alright. Oh, we killed headphone users. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, oh, no. Oh, I feel so bad. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let me change our viewport here. Uh, there we go. Perfect. That was the Cars. Let's yeah. go. That was the Cars. Let's go. Uh, that song was courtesy of Jeff. Um, I've had it stuck in my head all day. It really gets there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't know if yeah, I don't know if uh, people don't listen to the Cars anymore. Really, uh, it's an old band, but uh, it's a great uh, band. Um, in fact, uh, during their peak, uh, they performed at Live Aid, the original, and it was awesome. It was great, even though they had problems with the drum machine. But um, yeah, great band. People are saying the <coughs> the audio is really loud. Mm -hmm. I just moved it down a little bit. Let me know if it's still too loud. Um, I just took down a bit. I realized right after we went live that the settings were still a bit weird from when I was at your house and we had those audio problems uh, and I was yes, maxing yes. all kind of stuff. Audio is weird. At least it's not too quiet. It's um, thump thump, better audio. It's fine. It's good. All right, we're good. <sighs> well, we're both at Mark's today. That's awesome. We are here. Yeah, we're here. I'm close. I'm not actually. My head's not literally twice the volume of Jeff's. It's just that I'm closer to the camera. And uh, it gives that impression. I don't know how to really. I don't know. We got it here, right? Like, it's all good. Yeah, just the camera, because you're oh. so back and I'm so here, and it just. Oh yeah, you're yeah, yeah, like, it's like a little lines. person, and yeah, and then big person. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're both here at Marks. We're on incredible internet. So, I th although I'm uh, right now at everyone's request, I'm actually only broadcasting at 720p with a decent frame rate because. Mm, um, dropping frames? Twitch hasn't got around to hooking up our channel yet. I've been pushing them, but and they're like, yeah, yeah, they're on it. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> until they hook our channel up with like a partnered kind of thing, I can't offer multiple resolutions. Uh, so I see, when I, I was see, doing see. Like, like the 3 to 5K 1080p mega, some people, some people don't have the download to, to keep up with that, and they, they, they get hurt. So um, so right now we're at, we're, at, we're at 720p with 30 frames per second. It should be nice and smooth and easy, but yet at the same time, mm -hmm. hopefully most of you get it. I think I'm only, I'm only like 1200k variable bit rate, so. Well, you know, we have also um, some unplanned, uh, again, some unplanned shirt coincidences. So this, this. Yeah, this was not planned. Well, yeah, it's unplanned. We, it just, yeah. you know, it happens, right? Yeah. It's us in shirts, you know, things happen. Uh, it's one of the few printed shirts that I still wear so regularly. Yeah, I wear them all all the time because they're all awesome. That's true. That's just me though. That's true. Um, um, but this one I'm particularly fond of. I am. Uh, especially, you know, Yeah. It's cool. <coughs> Three different colors. Yeah, uh, but, mine's yeah. better, but yours is pretty nice. Guess. Today, we thought, okay, oh yeah, by the way, there's a new store thing in the corner. Uh, Stacy activated the code again, so for the duration of the stream, you can get 20% off anything in the new store. Okay, that's done. Never say that again. Um, and obviously, uh, again, I, I threw the pick because I don't often show the pick of our setup, and our setup continually evolves. But a big thanks to Razor again for giving us um, the the ability to do this kind of cool stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna have a, a some gaming uh, gaming nights or gaming days. I guess gaming twelve hour periods yes, of time. Huge and, tour periods. That's true. And it's gonna be awesome. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna bring this. We're going to Calgary actually um, tomorrow. We're on the same flight. Uh, another unplanned coincidence. But um, yeah, we're going to go to Calgary, we're going to do some gaming events in, in Calgary. Yes, so if you live in Calgary, or you live near enough by car or plane that you want to come down and hang out with us, it's just an open door, um, we have this land cafe, it's called Node, uh, Node Gaming in Calgary. It's actually a pretty cool place, I've been there before, I played some League last time I was in Calgary for the con, I took my glass off. Um, <coughs> but that, I think there's only about three dozen computers there, 
So yeah. uh, depending on, on, you know, th there's a good chance that if, if you don't come early, you might not get a PC. That's a, yeah, but well, we, we, we might look into sort of swapping people out. I don't yeah. know if that's... We'll, we'll try to take turns. Um, and also, I'm going to bring my 3DS if you guys want to street pass me, get my Mii. And also, <clears throat> I'm pretty good at Mario Kart 7. And if you want to get destroyed in Tetris, I'll, I'll play in, in that too. Um, just as a way to get people like being able to like, play with us if you don't have an actual computer. And then mm -hmm. hopefully people are friendly and, and swap on. Of course, maybe two dudes show up and then and look at us, we're fools. Two okay. dudes, man. Two dudes. And, and we're the two dudes. Yeah. Might but, uh, happen. Might not. Yeah. So, I already asked, what do you guys think of Mario Kart 8? Well, before I get there, I'll say that um, uh, this week's E3. Okay, so... Um, there. Why wow, you saw my brain break right on? That's, this that's, week's that's awkward. That's awkward. Um, <laughs> Breaks brains. Okay, I, well, I was gonna quickly. Yeah, fuck it. Go right uh, <laughs> It's like no. It's what I was. I wanted to say first because I read another question, and so what, I should never read the chat while I'm talking because then my brain splits, splits into two threads. Um, this week was E3, as anyone that's a gamer knows and who pays attention to any blogs, it was a huge week. So we thought that it's a good timing, because today was actually the last day of E3, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's good timing for our stream to just, that's going to be our focus of discussion today, um, will be E3 and the future of gaming in general, uh, and what people think about the reaction. There's been obviously a pretty polarized response. Um, if by polarized, you can describe it as 99% in one camp and 1% in the other. But it's been a pretty pretty crazy week, and I don't really, in fact, ever in my whole life, um, in, in 30 years of playing video games, I've never seen a console lose a war before um, it hit the market. Like, I, I never actually saw a console war end before launch date, and this time it happened. It's fucking amazing and cool. Um, mm -hmm. and, and to celebrate that, we also, uh, we're going to bring on, uh, we have a guest today who's never been on the podcast before. He doesn't really have much to do with Pyramid, other than he's been one of our best friends since we were like 10 years old. Um, like everybody, like Joel and yeah, you know. right. So uh, his name is Derek Sweet. He's a comedian, and he hosts Sit Moss with Joel. So we're actually going to bring him on his face and everything on, onto the chat because he's also of everyone I've ever known. He owns um, every system ever made. He's a collector, an enthusiast, and he knows everything. And I'd just be curious to hear what he thinks about E3 and and um, yeah, you know, the, the pending war. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. Derek is, is um, uh, you know, I'm the kind of gamer, I think Jared's the kind of gamer, we get into one game, we play, you know, we played a lot for a while, and, you know, and then we sort of concentrate on games. Derek's a guy that plays every fucking game, mm -hmm. owns every console. You know, he is the, the most knowledgeable gamer I know, um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to having him on this stream. A yeah. um, couple of questions for you, Jared. Uh, uh, have we tweeted and Facebooked? Uh, oh, we got Chicken Man's on the Facebook. Ch Chicken Man. We shall be tweet. I retweeted Chicken Man's tweet. Oh, great! And that was really awesome. easy. I tweeted half an hour ago to let people know. Chicken Man's awesome. She's, 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 she's on the rock. Um, so I did Chicken tweet. I, I looked at. Oh, yeah, so far, two fifty six people coming on board. That's cool. Oh, that's good. Good. And the second question is, what are the chances of getting Dave on his DS playing Tetris during our gaming events? What do you think about that? I just popped in my head. I thought I. I don't know if it'll be technically possible from China. Ooh, or from South Africa if he's there, or maybe he's in Hong Kong. If he's now. there, it's more technically possible. Mm. Um, it's definitely more technically possible if it's there. Mm. Well, maybe we should get in touch with him. We'll get in touch with him and maybe have a, a DS Dave uh, presence. That would be awesome, I think. You know, would... I would like to play Dave. And... <laughs> <laughs> you guys haven't played in a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, I don't even know why I have this in. No one's on Skype yet. Um, so yeah, uh, totally distracted. Fuck was I? That's right. And um, yeah, so future of gaming. Fucking, that's the, that's the, the. That's what we're talking about. Talk. <laughs> We've got Derek Sweet. Derek Sweet on board. Um, Google his name, and then you can find comedy and all sorts of things. You probably find his birthday and stuff like that, and his phone number. Um, but yeah, so Derek is actually is 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 one of my oldest friends, and he's a guy that I used to rollerblade to his house. Almost every day in it was Calgary. the 90s, World of Legends. It's the 90s. Yeah. So World of Legends just came out, and they were really, really cool. I'm yeah. sure they're really, really cool still. And, uh, and, and we just grew up playing games, and he had everything. So what I lacked, he, he would have. And, and so literally it's been um, over 20 years that Derek and I have been this, this sort of gaming buddy where we always like, and it's, it's like 80% clash, 20% agree on 
gaming. So, but regardless, because I, I'm the kind of game that plays one game a lot and, and tries to get really good at it, and Derek likes to just play all the games, so he understands everything that's happening. So we have the, we typically have really good discussions about um, gaming from two very hardcore players, but two totally different types of hardcore players. So be pretty cool. Um, we're, we're talking Derek up way too much, but to yeah. add to the fire here, uh, you know, Derek oh, no. had, had he had oh, the no. TurboGrafx 16 3D glasses. Back in the I only had the TurboGrafx 16. Really? No, he had the 3D version of some top-down shooter, <laughs> space, space, whatever. No, he, he did have everything. He he brought his Atari Lynx to school, and everyone shot their pants. Um, and we were like, wow, color portable. Like, that was insane. Because yeah. the Game Boy was like... Dude, he brought his Lynx to school. Remember the Atari Lynx? Yeah. Um, yeah. For the four minutes it operated on six A's before it ate the batteries or something. But uh, anyways, yeah. Anyone that grew up with Derek knows, like, Derek knows his shit. So. Derek's a gamer. And Bill Brasky. Remember that? Skit? Oh, this is, we're talking him up a lot. That's yeah. Nice then we're talking Derek up. It was a cool week. I, I got pretty excited by this week. Um, I was paying a lot of attention to, uh, to E3 more than I expected. Uh, I think it's really funny. I, I was really hoping that, that Sony would knock it out of the park because, I mean, literally, like, I, I've owned every console up until the last generation since Atari 2600. And the last generation, I did not buy a PS3. And it's and it's and it didn't, like, haunt me or anything, but it, it always felt weird. Like, it was, like, it was the first time ever I consciously chose not to buy a system um, and then, yes, yeah, so we're coming to this this new console cycle that started with the Wii U coming out last year, and, mm -hmm. and I just never like in, in twenty years I've never seen anything like what's happening right now, which is like a nearly unanimous backlash against just the, the incredibly stupid policy put in by one company that's creating a flood and and literally ending this war. It's been it's been fought for like seven years. They were pretty close. Xbox has always been slightly in the lead, and now it's just. It's really amazing. I'm actually proud of consumers in a little way. Like I'm actually proud that mm -hmm. hopefully they're, they're speaking with their pre-order dollars as well. But anyway, we shouldn't get too much of that. We should get Derek on before we get too much of that, right? Because why not? Uh, right? Yeah. Oh, well, for sure. Let's get, let's get on Skype here. And, and yeah, like what, what, what Jared's talking about here is it usually comes down, like you see a lot of big failures in companies. It's, it's never like some low-ranking individual that is making some decision it's always a colossal epic fail like dig version four right like somebody <laughs> thought that was a good idea somebody thought they shouldn't a b test the site um you know it was like oh you just killed a you know a 60 million dollar brand or website in 24 hours um so yeah it's it's really interesting to watch what's going on in the console wars and the epic fails that are happening. We have Derek on the line, apparently. Derek, what's going on? Hey, hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can't see you, though. Have you uh, got video enabled? Do we Enable see you? Enable that video, and then what I'll do is I will... Oh. Awesome. Accept, all right, here we, we go. We accept your video. This is this is the legendary Derek we've been talking up. Um, there is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... We we're talking about, and, and you just feel to chat. There's no structure here, man. There's no, we don't give a fuck. So just feel feel free to interrupt us or, or chime in at any point. But I was just about to. Well, we were in the middle of laughing at, at Microsoft. Personally, it it is my opinion that the war is over, um, and that the Sony's already won. And and barring Microsoft going back, um, not apologizing, but completely rewriting their policy and saying, hey, no, no, we got it wrong. No, no, no you can totally trade our games, and we're totally fine. Um, that there's no, there's no recovering from this. Do you feel that way at all? Because you're way more console guy than I am, but like, do you get that feeling? That Sony just won, sorry, I'm like still focused on technical issues. Can you hear me okay? Because I'm, I'm getting like Facebook messages from people saying like, turn up your mic and like. Uh, I hear you fine, man. Yeah, I hear you fine on, on my end. What, what, what about the stream here? You're too loud and he's too quiet. There's no way we can hear you both. Oh, oh, yeah? oh yeah, motherfucker, check this shit, bitch. Maybe see, I'll see if I can, uh... Th th I think, God damn, I my, think my mic is pretty high, man. I'm almost maxing it out when I look at my little microphone okay, so, display. So, so how about right now? Did, did, did I quiet us enough so that, uh, that, that people can turn their speakers up without fear of killing themselves? I, I'm talking to stream chat over Derek, and then I wait for them to, to give me feedback on, uh... 
Yeah, totally. Now you're both low. Now we're both low, and you know what that means? Your speaker should be turned higher, motherfucker. That's right. Sweet. Even's all that matters. Um, Let's do this thing. All right. Sounds great. Okay, cool. So, uh, I mean, we have, a, we, we have a podcast that's coming out, like an episode of Stuck in the Middle of Somewhere, that's kind of like days before E3 and then days after. And I, uh, you can... Back, hopefully. I think we're back. Some bullshit happened. There, there was some bullshit and some bullshit. And, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Derek, uh, what, what were you just saying about the epic rant about uh, Sony just spanking Microsoft? Are we back? Cause we, we are back, for sure. Cause, so, I'm, I got the stream up here. Maybe I just need to refresh. But I was just saying, man, that, like, to, I don't know how much people heard of what I was saying before we crashed, but I just... It was everything I wanted to hear Sony say is what they said. You could even listen to an episode of Sitmos where we... We do two couple days before and a couple days after, and I'm literally in the podcast saying, like, I just want Sony to come out and have an attitude about it and just be like, yeah, no, we're not going to destroy gaming. We're going to not make it a system that'll stop working in 20 years. We're going to, you know, we know that you love your games and you're not just licensing the, 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 the uh, permission to play them, right? So instead... They're, they're, they, they said everything I wanted them to say right down to that snarky commercial where they're like here's how to trade a game on PS4 and they, they just hand the guy a game they're done it's like that was just so perfect it everything was perfect, was perfect. <clears throat> they, couldn't, they yeah. couldn't have done it better and, and IGN even had a poll that said who won E3 and it was like 80% Sony well and, and honestly man the only 20% are irrational fanboys you either have to have been dropped in your head as an infant or, or is snuffed a lot, of, a lot of glue or something to think that Microsoft walked away ahead of Sony after that press conference. Objectively speaking, regardless of, of your own loyalties, um, you'd have to be colossally stupid to think that Microsoft didn't get spanked there. Well, you know, on, 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 on most public polls on any issue, 80 20 is, is insane. It's a it's landslide. Insane, yeah. It's just, it's, it's like you just have a big Sony dick in your ass, Microsoft. Like, yeah. it's. Which is funny because. Um, Oh, shit, I forget what I was going to say. Never mind. That's true. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the one downside I was going to say that people have brought up <clears throat> is that the PS4 is going to require paid multiplayer like um, the Xbox 360 has done for seven years. Uh, but the PS3 never made you pay for it. And they throw that in at the bottom. It's like, yeah, but paid multiplayer now. But it's like, yeah, but you still can't say shit because <laughs> their competitors have been doing it for seven years and you never said shit, so... And all the third-party apps like Netflix and stuff still work on PS4 without the paid subscription, but they don't work on Xbox One without their paid wow. subscription. That's some knowledge bombs I did wow. not know. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I have someone else, actually, uh, I want to bring into the chat. Uh, Who's going to be uh, uh, talking about uh, the yeah. Microsoft? If, 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 if they're into talking about uh, the console. This guy knows a little bit about consoles, too. I don't know. Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Derek knows this guy for sure. Uh, are you there, man? I'm here, dude. Oh, ah. sweet, sweet. Here, let me see if I can. Why does everybody call him Doe? <laughs> dude. Doe, man. FPS Doe. FPS Doe. Bit of uh, inside thing now. It's it's actually it's because Derek for like. Ten years, we received emails from people saying "FPS Doe" because they don't know how to spell Doug, and so <laughs> I brought that up on stream once. And then we had a picture contest where I said, "You know, use FPS Doe as a theme." And now um, <clears throat> there's a picture contest. Surprise! People add that extra H. I don't get it at all. But uh... well, it's because it's kind of it's kind of like Doug. Huh. Doug. Yeah. There's a little bit of like emphasis at the end there. That, I don't know. So hey, Joel, do, do you have video? What's going on? I can I can try to enable your video. Assuming it doesn't crash the the call again if you want to risk it man I, it doesn't really matter to me let's risk it. it let's risk it we'll give it a shot sorry guys if it crashes we'll just start again right right away um but i i think this is i think i can do it on this skype pretty sure uh right so uh, i don't know send that video well, joel send, send that video man hey, everybody i don't have the option man it's not giving me any options here no enable video and shit there's an exclamation oh. what is that all about Oh, what did you make me do? Okay, good. All right. Uh, 
Oh, Joel Gerner need needs to, to get the, the latest, latest Skype. Skype to use group video. Lick my balls, man. Like, what the fuck? Are you, wow. are you on an iPad? Yeah, I'm on an iPad. <laughs> I got that shit. I ain't, I ain't doing no... You gotta, you, know, go the, you gotta go to the you gotta go to the app store, Joel. Go to updates in the app store. There's a Skype update. And uh... God damn these updates, man! <laughs> Why doesn't it just update my stuff? Why is it gonna tell me I gotta update my shit? You know what, man? On my Android device, I have that checked off. So I don't know about Apple. But, no, uh... no, you can't do that on on iPhone or iPad. It's just Apple will just always tell you to install iTunes, even though you've uninstalled it. That's what I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can't. I don't know how to turn that off. Actually, I think I need third-party <laughs> software. Well, according to according to iTunes, man, uh, all my apps are up to date. So, it could be shit out of luck. All right. Well, we're shit out of luck. It's a good picture, anyway. Yeah. Um. So we were just talking briefly. Good lips. Damn. They are some pretty good lips, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? What's going on? Uh, we were just talking about E3 because for me, anyway, it's it's been a really crazy E3 because I've never really seen anything like it where and normally E3 companies come forward and they're like here's Nintendo here's Sony here's Microsoft and here's our um, awesome stuff and it's all pretty awesome and nobody really knows for sure I remember when the Wii launched a lot of people were like oh Nintendo's done but I, I never believed that like I actually thought, saw the Wii and I was like wow I think there's something genius here and it's going to hit and then it did work out and it's like but no one's like no one's at home right now saying mm, but there's something genius about this Xbox one people haven't I think there's some moronic Microsoft employees at home going no they just haven't figured out the value of our constantly connected system yet um, yeah we do because I've played constantly connected games for 10 years like I understand where you're going with this genius idea of being constantly connected. Well, um, is, is there any developer that's going, I'm going to develop for the Xbox One because I know that my IP will be protected. Yes. There will be no piracy. There will be no yes. trading. I'm going to sell so many games because I'm... Is there yes. any developer that's saying so that right the, the, now? There, like, the, the, I'm sure there are developers. And for one, uh, first of all, that idea is totally flawed. I don't think you'll sell any more games to the piracy control. I think that anyone who thinks that needs to do more research because they're stupid. And secondly... Um, What's really funny to me is that you know, like a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, as the Xbox One, God, still the stupidest f fucking name ever. Like, I, I don't even want to say it. When the Xbox <laughs> One was in development, you know, that they approached some of these studios that were making games like Titanfall, and they said, hey, man, like, exclusivity, and they signed these exclusivity contracts. They're Before big, they knew with the details, exactly, yeah. Really oh. big money contracts. And so Xbox comes for us. Yeah, X-Bone, by the way, from here on out, it's the X-Bone. It's the X-Bone. It's the stupidest fucking name for the dumbest fucking idea for console ever. The X Bone, we'll call it that from now on in the stream chat. X Bone. Oh, that's perfect. You, you know what's kind of funny? You you could have you could have surveyed eight year olds, and come up with a better name you based could have. on, oh, on yeah. an eight year old yeah. human like democratic Xbox system. Xbox Three would have been it, a better it name. It really shows their their arrogance, in in my opinion. Oh, it's because, unbelievable. Yeah. Because the the reason they named it that is because they wanted it to be the one system, and they really thought it was going to be the one system that everyone owns, and it's going to say fuck the rest, you know. And one that was their price. mentality. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and 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 they're not the first to do that. Even the Wii U, a lot of their their early advertising had to do with. You know, you can control your entire entertainment system from the Wii Pad, um, and I can. Like, I, I actually like, and it was actually really, really easy. Uh, my my TV, it synced with my Wii remote right away. My Sony TV, in fact. So like, I can turn my TV on and adjust the volume and change the input right from the Wii remote, which I guess is kind of neat and it makes me feel like it's all connected. But, but still, nobody wants that. Like, I, I don't know what set of people in the year 2013 live in the first world that are like, man, I. I, I don't have anything. Like, I don't have a fucking Blu-ray player. I don't have video games. I don't have television. I really need a one-stop shop turnkey solution to bring me to the year 2014. Well, Damn well, it. Dude, that I wish someone would make that. isn't a one-stop fucking thing anyway. Who watches live TV these days? Who watches live TV? Well, uh, I don't. I, I uh, watch recorded TV, and I download the rest of my shit. You know? I, I watch sports, but I don't sports. actually have a cable yeah, subscription because... Funny. I want, like, honestly, I'll maybe one day we'll dedicate a screen to talking about the stupidity of, of cable subscription policies um, and, and the inability to subscribe to one channel at a time um, and how much money that's costing them. But, uh, but I, I actually watch live TV for sports because to me, watching sports on reruns or, or after, after you even know, even if you don't know the result, watching it after you know what's happened, it's just, there, there's not much there for me. So I steal those streams because, again, I'm, I'm not paying $100 a month to watch one g hockey game every two weeks. But, um, but yeah. 
I think, yeah, I, I think I, I was on a point way before uh, I got The scariest scared. thing about the Xbox, though, is, uh, is the whole Prism shit and them being, like, one of the first companies to sign on to that shit, you know? Um, that's what scares me. I, I don't even want to walk into somebody's house that has an X, Xbox One, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in fact, I, I was mistaken on an earlier stream that uh, infrared does go through mm -hmm. uh, materials and they yeah, can you see, can, like, you can cover your camera. You can tell, like, your emotions, like, when you're getting flushed or frustrated. Yeah. That shit's scary. And the mic, yeah. man, hearing all your conversations. You can no longer be uh, having that bong out there. What? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And also, but honestly, and I know you say it as a joke, but, but seriously, man. Like, seriously, people need to consider what happens in their living room that may be legal or not legal, but, and, but the, the amount of privacy and... and and again, well, the, well, the whole NSA thing that happened, like this, but what, what people don't realize is, like, okay, there's a current state of affairs now, and there's a current, you know, spy oper operation going on, but they don't realize that when the information's out there, it's out there forever. There are people that are recording this for all time, and you don't know what government or what society is going to be like in 20 years. Maybe you're a 17 year old and you're doing some shit in your house, and there's an Xbox watching you, and it's recorded for all time to be mined retrospectively. Um, and if some future date, 20, 30 years from now, that anything you do on the internet, anything you put out there, is is out there forever. You cannot delete it. You're putting the information out, and that's that's the scariest thing, regardless of who's in power in whatever country nowadays. It's it's not just about the policies that are in place at this moment. It's not about this moment. It's about what yeah, can about happen the in the future. And if, yeah. if you haven't seen the interview with, uh, I can't remember his name, um, but the whistleblower on the NSA scandal, the PRISM scandal. Which Snowden, is, yeah. But, which, Snowden, yeah, which I think is perfect timing with the Xbox One, because if, if that scandal hadn't happened, People like me, who literally live on this stream as an Xbox announced it, immediately had Orwellian thoughts about the fact that there's this infrared camera. And in fact, at the time, I made a joke about putting a sock on it before I jerk off in my living room. But no, that doesn't even work. You'll see me jerk off right through the sock. Um, and people were like, ah, maybe conspiracy theorist, government. Eh. I'm so fucking happy the Prism scandal broke at the exact same time that Microsoft is trying to put an infrared camera into everyone's living room, and they were the first company to jump on board. It's absolutely fucking perfect. And, and you're, it's at the point where, like, if you do not believe that that they have the ability, uh, you know, not just the means, but but the intention to record everything they can about you in your in your private life, then you are naive. And there, and there's there's no other word except maybe stupid fits a bit, but but um, it's it's certainly naive. And, and I actually feel sorry. I feel sorry for people naive enough that like are just going to put an Xbox One in the living well, room. Well, I just hate uh, that attitude of uh, if you're not doing anything wrong, if you've got nothing to hide, then why do you care? It's, it, it, you're totally missing the point, like completely. Like, can't, you can't even walk around naked in your house anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. It's that kind of shit. Someone uh, posted, uh, you can just turn the camera around, lol, which is a great point. Yeah, uh, yeah. What, about the, what about the mic? Now there's that mic that's always on. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to turn your Xbox on somehow. Yeah. And I think it needs to see somebody's face before it will operate, right? Well, there, there actually is no hard power button on the console. That, that, yeah, that was, yeah. There is no power button. Like, you, you turn it on with voice. You, you never on. know if, if it's even on or off. Um, and, and, and I know I'm paranoid because I'm a bit older, and I, and I grew up in high school, read 1984, and have re since re read it a couple times for pleasure and Brave New World. If you haven't read these books, read these fucking books right away. Um, and so, you know, right away, my, my, my you know, my intuition is, is, is to be afraid of, of this stuff, but, um, fuck, I can't remember where I was going. Anyway, it's Can not we talk about games? Yeah, you know, we'll go back. To, okay. Wait, wait, but before we go to games, I just want to say, um, Jared has his Facebook open, and, um, I looked at Jared's Facebook, and I was like, I need to subscribe to Suicide Girls. I need to like them right now. And I went, and I liked Suicide Girls. I think Suicide Girls is the only thing keeping me on Facebook right now. Suicide Girls is great. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, and it is I, really amazing. You know, I knew about their website and I visited their website. And then now I realize why the fuck have I not been liking them on Facebook. So there you go. There's my aside. Let's talk about games, Derek. Uh, is there something you want to talk about in particular? Um, well, no, not really. Well, I, I want to talk about Derek. You guys are talking about E3, man. Uh, and I saw, I saw a meme on Reddit the other day that kind of summed up my feelings perfectly, which was, it is so funny that this year's E3 was one by shit that we could already do on our current systems. 
We can trade our fucking games. We can sell our used games. We don't have to be connected to the internet all the time. And that's what Sony won it with, was by saying that their new system's gonna do that too, you know? <laughs> it, it really is pretty funny. It's, wow! Yeah, it, it's, it's not just doing what the last generation did, it's, it's doing what the first generation did. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, we got this 1982 Atari shit going down, or if you got a game, motherfucker, you give it to your friend, he can play that shit! And it's like, whoa! Like, literally, and, and literally, the audience is like, the, you can give the game console. to your friend as though you actually own something you bought, and then the audience is like, oh yeah! Which says a lot of about the consumer mindset in 2013, especially with exactly. regards to software, how we've stopped becoming owners. Like, you know, it's, it's one thing if you rent your fucking house, but but actually, like, our society is moving in a direction, at least in the first world, where people are losing the concept of ownership to everything. Everything, everything. you do, you're leasing your fucking car, you're leasing all your stuff, you're leasing everything, until you're at a point where you realize you're renting your life, you own nothing, and when you die, you leave nothing back for your family. Uh, also, like, unlocking your phone, right? The whole, yeah. uh, in Canada, it was mandated by the government that you can unlock your phone legally. But in the States, uh, is that still the case? That Did, did you see that comment? I did. I, someone had commented that uh, <laughs> 1984 is an interesting and relevant story about how scary, scary technology can be, but... It's a terribly ter boring it's a, book. It's an <laughs> asterisk, terribly boring book. Asterisk, asterisk, yeah. asterisk, terribly boring book. Okay, so... English so, might not be his first language, maybe. So, uh, George Orwell, who volunteered for the Spanish Civil War I'm just going to really believe English isn't his first language. For the life adventure, and then who lived down and out in Paris and London, which is the name of his amazing book. Um, you know, Orwell's insane, guys. If you haven't read Orwell, I've read so much Orwell. And it's not just Animal Farm and, and 1984. He wrote of a lot of other great stuff that is relevant today. In fact, I was, remember the Egyptian Revolution when everyone was like, oh, we're cleaning up, everyone's all together. I was like, oh, Orwell wrote about that in 1932 when the Spanish Revolution <laughs> happened. And everyone was like, oh, hey, share, share, how that, and it had lasted for like a week. And then it was like, oh, we're going to go back to like the same old ways. There's always, a, anyway, I'm going off on Orwell here. But uh, uh, yeah, man, if you think Orwell's boring, um, Go live a life. <laughs> <laughs> experience, experience the world. Experience, you know. Uh, uh, anyway, sorry guys. Like that was, that was really hard. doesn't have like any naked girls or any explosions. History. There's no explosions. It doesn't have a lot of profanity. No. I don't know how you can expect a modern generation to pay attention. Derek Sweet is not in the basement of Jeremy from the TV series. It no. does That's kind keep, of look similar keeps to keeps popping it, up in chat. Know. That's why I bring it up. Um... He's it does have naked girls, but that but they're very malnourished and it's not hot at all. That's right. A guy pointed out that there are naked girls in 1984, but it's a sad naked. It's a very sad naked. It's a guilt-ridden sex, followed by punt. You know, I don't want to ruin the story, but like, yeah. it's 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 a terrifying and really sad future. So back to the games for a second. Let's do Dude, games, man. I actually I actually brought a shirt. I actually didn't mean to go live in this. I got a haircut this afternoon. Oh, yeah? And uh, and I so I got a haircut in this shirt and, and typically I, I would like shower and change after haircut. Cause oh yeah, yeah. Because I, I know I know Jared is right? like is like haircut equals shower. Oh yeah, instant shower. But I didn't have time today, so I brought a change yeah. of shirt and I was gonna change my shirt. And I fucking forgot. But then he showed up in this and I was like, well, no, I don't want to change, change that shirt change no, now. No. But it was my Mega Man shirt because I'm very happy. You see, you know, Sony and uh, Microsoft have dominated E3, but I I know there's 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 people. In the, in the in the chat, that uh... dude, what are you talking about? Nintendo killed it. Their their massive news about the Wii Fit trainer being in the new Smash Bros. Man, I almost shit my pants. Well, that is pretty cool. I think you're being sarcastic, motherfucker. But it is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. But what's not? What's fucking actually cool is Mega Man being in Smash Brothers. And and the biggest news and the biggest news ever. I should tweet this shit more often, but I fucking don't. No tripping. So, I. I guess you guys are going to be Smash Brothers. What the fuck? There's no tripping. No tripping in Smash Brothers Wii. Mega Man's in the motherfucker. Wii Fit Trainer Villager from yeah. Animal Crossing. I, I come off sarcastic, man, but I, I'm, I'm still happy for Nintendo because Nintendo does still come up with great games. Yes, they're still the same old IPs, but they're still new games like they always do something new with their fucking ips you know what i mean yeah oh yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not the reskin same game which oh no no, is, no. Uh, yeah. in fact i don't know if you saw today and you know reggie Phillips, uh the, i think he's the ceo or president or at least public relations head of of 
Um, uh, Nintendo America came out today and said, if, 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 <laughs> which I love the balls, like balls on the fucking table. He's like, you know, if, if Microsoft has such a problem with piracy, maybe they should make better games. Oh, yeah. Love and, that. So that you and don't want to sell it. But you yeah, don't want exactly. to sell it because yeah. you're done in 16 hours and there's no more value to the $60 product you bought. He's like, and Nintendo, as a matter of fact, has a significantly less trading rate than any other um, hardware uh, manufacturer for their games. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this is twofold. Like, I, I mean, I don't think it's just because their games are better, which they are. I, but I also think it's because it's a far more casual system, and I think um, soccer moms are much less likely to care and go to GameStop and trade in. They're just going to buy the next fucking game and keep it in, in, in the collect dust in the shelf. So I don't think that it's, it's totally fair that that's... The quality is the only reason, but it's a big part of the reason. I would never trade in my Mario Kart Wii or my Mario Kart 7 or anything like that because I still occasionally go back and play them. I don't want to lose the, the ability to go and play online the best racing game ever made. I mean, it's like well, they, and Nintendo the always they, has they, the best in their genre for the few genres they make. Yeah. The other thing they really miss in terms, in terms of the used game market and the, and the big picture is they don't realize that guys like, like me, I do it quite often. I, I do go through my... My collection i'm like okay which games don't i really play or don't care about trading in now because i want to get this new game that just came out and i use that money to buy that new game or else i just wouldn't have bought the new fucking game because i wouldn't have had the money <clears throat> it was also the whole collection aspect too like what do you want to have on your shelf is like yeah. oh here here is here is a work of art i will keep for all time yeah yeah, you know, yeah. like there's some games that that are at that level, and there's books that are at that level. Well, and there's that's, that are not, at that level. that's not even going to exist anymore with the Xbox One. You don't that you're not going to have that mm -hmm. collection uh, anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and I, you hear a lot of some some big people have talked about how well it's no different. Steam, you know, on Steam you haven't you haven't been able to trade your games forever. But you know, uh, Steam games cost ten to fifteen bucks. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but also, like and from, a lot of them for free. <laughs> from the get go, you're choosing to use Steam as a service instead of buying it at a store and having yeah. it. Yeah, you always I mean, have the option to buy it at the store. Right? It, it, the argument fails immediately because you're choosing to use Steam versus having having no choice at all. Um, and as a fact, um, I am a huge Steam user. I love digital distribution. I even use the Nintendo eShop and I just digitally buy a lot of my games. I prefer to digitally buy my games. It's really, it's not about that. I'm not a used game trader, but it's about, to, to me, what it, what it is, um, on a professional, like on a business level, from my weak business knowledge that I have, I do not think that consumers in any part of the world, uh, and especially, or, or at, <clears throat> at least uh, where I live, are prepared to accept a, a fundamental principle of our philosophy of, of walking into a store, purchasing a physical product, going where the home, retailer gets half, of, the retailer, yeah. and then going home and, and not owning that thing that you just bought and see and touch and feel, that's totally different. If I choose to go online and buy digital rights to something, I made the choice to download and buy digital rights. But if I go to a store and buy that fucking disc, that's my disc. I own that disc. And if you don't want to have that relationship with consumers, don't sell the fucking disc, period. So if Microsoft, in their <laughs> just unimaginably tiny brain, if, if they had realized that, it's just gone, you know what, if, 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 they, if, we're, if we're so gung-ho on this, no piracy, then how about we don't even sell games at Best Buy? But of course, they lose tons and tons of money. I'm sure their Walmart sales are probably half their sales, but if it, honestly, if they think the average consumer, the average soccer mom, the average gamer kid, anyone is prepared or accepted the reality that you walk in a store and you buy something physical and you don't own it, they're, they're, thinking, they're, they're way in the future now. You know, there was a really interesting situation where someone brought up the idea of uh, when you buy a CD, when you buy music, do you own the physical media or do you own the data on it? Mm -hmm. And um, it turns out the answer is you own neither really because suppose your disc gets damaged can you write in to to the record company and say send me a new one i bought the data send me a new one my disc was damaged they're like no sorry go buy it buy it, go buy it again but if you if you, if if you actually uh you know have have the data then sorry i forgot what i was going to say i got distracted by you know, what was going on, on the screen here you guys gotta stop reading the stream when you're coming. I know, it's distracting. It's so hard. I know, it's hard not to. It's 2013, man, live and live. It's being so quiet. We're being like, bummed. Like, why isn't Derek saying anything? And it's because I'm sitting here watching this stream and, like, I'm like, oh, people are talking about how I'm not saying anything. I should uh, fucking say something. No, I'm probably sweating right <laughs> now. Uh. No, I mean, like, I, I had an argument with this guy about it the other day. And he was saying, he was talking about how PC players have had this for a while. It is similar to Steam in the sense that you are just 
buy in, in and I said I think the reason the PC players accepted it more readily than console players is that PC players we've always installed our games and kind of put the discs aside anyways and kept the copy protection sheets around and then so they kind of accepted the idea much more readily about just licensing the digital version of the game than a console player will. Yeah, and that could be it. It, it could be why the consumers of PC games were, were more ready for that. But it's, it's, you know, my gut, and maybe I'm wrong, but like right now, the, the console base, the, all the people in, in North America that play consoles instead of PC, like I don't think they're ready for this massive leap where all of a sudden you, because nothing else changed. You still walk into Best Buy, you still pay $60, you still bring your game home, except now you don't own it. Like that's the difference. That's insulting. It's it kind seems, of like a slap in the face. I would there, be was, there was a big point just, you just made there too, man, was that you walk in and you pay $60 for every game. It doesn't matter how good the game is doesn't matter whatever you know like steam does have shit with that you know tiered pricing you know mm -hmm. not every fucking game comes out is sixty dollars mm -hmm. which is great yeah yeah in fact steven spielberg was saying today uh the, talking about the inevitable implosion of hollywood i want to talk to this yeah because you soon. you you can't make a 250 million dollar movie yeah. it's and not gonna like, it's not gonna make 250 times the money of like, a million dollar movie in the future <laughs> you might have to pay 25 dollars to see iron man 7 in the theater and Basically. good, because anyone that goes to the theater to see that should have $25 taken from them. And you might only pay $7 to see Lincoln or something. And that's fucking great, because then people who want, you know, more serious quality films who don't, who, who generally make a, a fifth as much as yeah. complete comic book garbage, well, I can see that for cheaper now. Well, you know, that's fucking amazing. like, film is going to change huge. In fact, I'm really surprised that a big company like Google, Microsoft, or Amazon or, hasn't revolutionized film distribution, because... Uh, we still send physical drives and physical reels of analog film um, through the mail and we print them and it costs millions of dollars to print these prints and really it's possible to put up a torrent on a site, have some infrastructure, have completely digital movie posters in your lobby and just, you know, boom, press a button and then the movie's playing through your digital projector, digital, digital, all through the internet and and to have you know Google Theater or Microsoft Theater or some other company that has the wherewithal and infrastructure to build this kind of thing, but like it, it's really remarkable that it hasn't democratized um, uh, cinema. But not like I want I want cinema to become like YouTube. Um, of course, there has to be some quality control. Um, but <laughs> we well, had a big discussion. There, there, there is still something to be said about having that theater experience, though, you know? Like oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's seeing that big screen with the awesome sound and 3D if you're into it, you know? Yeah, and it, it's, what I'm talking about is exactly that. It, it's, it's, a, it's a massive, like, like, you know, theater experience that you can't get at home because, hey, guess what? You don't have, like, a huge-ass screen and, and insane speakers, but... You know, why not make it all digital, seamlessly integrated with the internet, and, and um, you know, not have these, you know, distributors be the only ones that are established that can do a 3,000 theater release. Suppose some indie filmmaker has a movie, and they can, at their home, press a button and have it become in, in 3,000 theaters because he, had, he or she had a pitch package that was good and whatever else, you know. Um, yeah, the, te yeah. the technology is available is what I'm saying. And it just, it's just a matter of some company, uh, some organization getting on board with this idea, which I think will happen inevitably. I think it's totally going to happen. I wanted to go back. Oh, hold on. Mm -hmm. um, I forget it. I was distracted because I read some comment in chat. And, anyway, I don't get into no it. way, you're distracted by the chat? I, I, yeah. I can't even have it open. But I was like, someone's like, oh, Jared's so cute with that scruff. I was like, ooh, uh, who said this? Let me look at some name. Maybe it's like Angela23. And it's like, I got a piss is the name of the person. <laughs> I got a piss. Like I don't think there's a, wow. a less sexy name that could have said that about I, me. I, I got a piss messages me all the time, Jared. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, uh, I, I thought we had something. I, I got a piss. I, 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 I got Fuck. a piss is 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 a real uh, big. Uh, and you know what? On that note, I, I really do got a piss though. Uh, Jared's got so a hold piss. Back. And, and I'll come back and I'll finish the thought that I had. All right, he's gonna come back, finish the thought. But hey, guys, uh, what were we talking about? We're talking about uh, media. Talking about games. Um... Well, it's, on this Xbox One versus PlayStation 4 thing, I do want to mention, like, because Jared was saying that that 20% of people that are still on the Xbox side are just fanboys. And you would not believe some of the conversations I've had with people that are fully defending everything Microsoft's doing and saying, no, it's great. It's great for gaming. And why wouldn't you want a system 
that, wait you know, a that second make sure that you're that everybody's paying for their games and it's all fair and that the companies will get reimbursed for it and w w for what they deserve and w wait a second uh, Derek are you actually arguing on the internet <laughs> well with a friend yeah <laughs> okay there you go okay that's with good like, well, <laughs> got with a guy that was a he was a news reporter that wrote an article about me when I did a comedy show in Wainwright Alberta yeah yeah and, he, and I, that's how I met him and yeah he's like this hardcore Xbox fanboy and he's like fully defending everything and saying I love the idea that I wouldn't be able to um, I don't have to get up and change my games and I'm like well you have games on demand you could have done this all along that's nothing new like <laughs> who's that and lazy then and then he's saying that he's like and it says that you can share your games with up to 10 family members oh. so he seriously thinks I'll be able to just declare 10 of my friends family members and they get access to all my games yeah you know it's 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 it, it's, you only have to buy one in every 11 game dude yeah like you and your 10 friends only get one in 11 games and you're good so Derek how, how many how many people out there are going like Wow, good on you, Microsoft, for this DRM type uh, enforcement. I can't wait for all the top-notch, higher quality games that would not have happened without this. You know, like it's, it's, it's like it's like wow, it's great. We're gonna have so we're gonna have the quality of games is gonna go through the roof now because of Microsoft's decision to like, you know, curb piracy and reselling of of used games. Like nobody's saying that. No, no, no. No development studio, no no artist, no game maker is is saying, "Oh, this is great because I'm going to have so much more money to make awesome games." Like you know, that's 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 got to be like. Does your opponent who you're arguing against believe that? Dude, did they not like? The, what happened to the music industry when they started to try to introduce all this DRM? Shit? Oh yeah, man, man. When 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 uh, when Napster came out, music oh. just got shitty in quality. <laughs> like, come on, like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Like what the hell? It was a huge drop there, man. <laughs> like yeah, like nobody was making music anymore. Like it was just like. <laughs> yeah. People are saying Jeff is laying a crushing on Derek. I'm not making these arguments. I'm saying what retarded Xbox fanboys are actually saying. I'm not defending that and trying to make that argument myself. No, I think they're very astute observers, Derek, and they're realizing that I'm crushing on you, uh, in the romantic sense of the word. <laughs> oh. so. No, no, no. I see. I'm just making that up. No, I think they're right. <laughs> well, Derek, Derek's, uh, he, no, he's nice. engaged. That's a, that's a good ASCII penis right there. That's fucking... That is a great I ASCII like how the jizz penis. sprays it's, in all directions. It's actually it's jizzing. directional jizz. Yeah, it's like, I, I, I know, but you're, like, do you guys have, like, a spray adapter on your penis, like those spray bottles? Because my jizz just goes one direction. Yeah, mostly one direction. Uh, I don't know about you guys. It varies in distance, but typically one direction. Is there an atomizer for jizz? <clears throat> I wanted to... Is atomizer. I wanted to go back quickly because I think I forgot a thought earlier. Or I did finish it, and now I just look crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hear it regardless. <laughs> but I just wanted to express condolences. This is me expressing condolences out there to all the developers who signed on to make exclusive games for the Xbox One. I know, I know you're out there. Some of you might be listening. You might yeah, work on, you might work on Titanfall. <laughs> they're, they're not indie developers, man. No, so they're I not indie. No, no. That. These are huge AAA titles worth multi-million dollars, and their exclusivity deals were multi-million dollars. But they accompanied a promise that that multi-million dollar exclusivity contract would outweigh the loss of sales from being an open platform title. Nobody is winning that signed that deal with Xbox One. Nobody. And everyone that made an amazing game, and Titanfall might be amazing, but one-fifth of people that could play it are going to play it now because it's on a system that's going to fucking die. And all the developers out there who, who got behind Microsoft are like, yeah, man, I don't want my games pirated anymore. Do your fucking research because that's not why your games might not be selling as much or why you're losing money. That's stupid. And again, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm really sorry for you that you, you signed the wrong deal. And, and they signed it when they didn't know. Because, you know, Microsoft came to them and, and they, have this, they have this data. And they're like, well, look at the Xbox 360 versus PS3 data. Look at how we're doing. Look at the Xbox, um, the previous Xbox versus PS2. Look at our market growth. Look, we're, we're clearly we're on path. We're going to dominate consoles. Sony's going to die in the next round. I don't know what they said in the meetings. I'm sure it was talking so much out of their ass. But they convinced a bunch of very big developers with very expensive games to make their games only for their system. And then they fucking shat on the consumer, pissed everybody off, and one in five gamers are going to buy their fucking system. 
And well, their, their well, total cost to install base is going to be so low that well, nobody who made an exclusive worth $40 million in development is going to make their money back. Well, fun. also, if the games are still in development, I can see a lot of people jumping ship, like looking for other jobs. Like the games are going to be shittier. Well, dude, like, not only did they shit on the consumer, they shat on a lot of developers. There's no more self publishing on the Xbox One, dude. Yeah, so no most indie developers are like, they're pretty much telling them to fuck off, which is another reason why right away I was like, PS4, because they're, they're embracing that shit, you know? Yeah, did you know that, Jared? No indie titles. There's only approved publishers are allowed to publish games on Xbox, Xbone. No, I, I, the Xbone. Called the Xbone on this stream. So those I, I great know that. arcade titles that you had, like Braid, wouldn't have existed. Yeah. Fucking Bastion won't exist. You know that shit won't exist on the Xbox One. I just want to pick up quickly because I keep referring to Titanfall because I thought that was exclusive to Xbox One because it wasn't on the PS4. It's not an exclusive. It's also on the PC, so it's not technically an exclusive. I can change that to Killer Instinct. I can change that to um, <clears throat> what? What was the the Halo follow up not made by the actual Halo guys because they're actually making Destiny that's on both <laughs> systems. Dude, uh, somebody said indie games are mostly shit. No, they're not. Like, there's some great... Dude, no, they're not. Yeah, there's like, a lot of great not, indie games. We're not talking about the games in the indie store. We're talking about some of the best, best XBLA arcade games. Yeah, we're talking about arcade games, man. We're not talking about those indie $1 titles, dude. Like, Braid. Who, who's calling it Braid or Bastion or games like that shit? Come on. Um, that's like saying you can't make great music <laughs> in your garage. I mean, a lot of indie developers are people with... Brilliant! Like this, Super this, they're boy. so fucking talented, but they they they, yeah, they do not have a job in, Super meat boy, in a major uh, explosion man developer. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> come on, like you you can make great games without being a part of a massive machine, um, and it's great too because you can get those games for five, ten, fifteen dollars, or sometimes whatever you want to pay in really great deals. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, if yeah, you're... Don't if, starve, another great one. Shit. My biggest problem with indie games uh, is that they're mostly single players. They don't particularly appeal to me, but I love the fact that they, that they do well and there's not indie games do well. You know, there's, there, was, there was one indie game at the time, I think it was called Minecraft. I don't know if you heard of it. Um, <laughs> that, that was an indie game. And, and because he was given the opportunity to publish his game on platforms like Steam, look what, look what happened. But, um, yeah, man. Well, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh, this whole, like, who won what. Um, I'm really at the state of gaming where... You know, I'm gonna need something really mind blowing to, to like I saw the gameplay. Yeah, like on that new uh, Tom Clancy game, looks fucking amazing. You know, it looks great. But I don't know, man. Like I'm gonna need some Oculus Rift kind of shit to like really blow my mind. You know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. Oculus Rift. See, that's <laughs> that's how the X Bone could have come in and shaken some shit up. Be like, by the way, motherfucker, is this some lawnmower man shit? It comes with a platform and 3D, like, maybe. Th 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 that kind of technological jump might force me to accept the fact that I don't own anything I pay for anymore, um, I guess, but that didn't happen at all. And and, and really, the, the X Bone is like, isn't it like almost exactly the same hardware wise as the PS4, but very tiny, slightly less powerful because of the RAM difference, but that's. It's like they're pretty much selling the same fucking hardware, but they're charging more money for it because they packed in the Kinect that, no, that you don't fucking want. Like, you gotta love how you, ha you have to pay $100 for something that nobody fucking wants, the camera you can't turn off that spies on you. A camera in your living room. Like, I honestly, like, man, there, there was a funny joke, and I totally agree with it, but it's like, like, infinite energy discovered. Do you see this, Jeff? Infinite energy discovered. We just need to find Orwell's grave and tap into his, him, him turning over in his grave. Uh, infinite, definitely. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's it's really like you're, you're putting an infrared camera in your living room uh, to a company that um, allows. Anyway, whatever. Does anyone actually enjoy Connect? Hold on, I'm gonna go to the chat here. There's five hundred people. Does anyone play Connect games and enjoy them in the chat? Well, well, I want you to you say it out loud I, that you do. The, the current Connect is garbage, dude. <laughs> Don't you remember I, when the I got? It's supposed to be a lot better in terms of like what it can do and what it can read and how it can how it interacts with you, but. Yeah, the current connect, fuck, dude. Who uses that shit? Joel can even remember when I when I was trying to lose weight, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna play tons of connect games. That's how I'm gonna lose weight. And Joel said, he's like, dude, it's not gonna work. And I was like, no, it is. I'm gonna play lots of connect games. And like literally after three days, I was done, done. I was like, these games suck. Yeah. It's a, th there's no feedback. There's no uh, feedback at all. And no one wants to, yeah, no one wants to play tennis with an, with an air thing that feels dude, nothing like tennis. Exactly. You feel the ball hitting your racket. And, and, man, and I will go further because people are like, well, Wii Tennis was big. Dude, 
I don't know if I don't know if you got me and Dave got really really into Wii tennis. We played it actually like more than probably most people have played Wii tennis. I consider myself an expert Wii tennis player. There is the difference between the Wii, which works, and the Kinect, which doesn't, is is tactile feedback to the player. And in fact, in, in the Wii's case, there's also audio feedback. So when you would hit the ball, swing something that you're actually holding. So A, yeah. you get to feel the fucking controller in your hand. B, when you make contact with the ball on the screen, the controller vibrates as though you hit a fucking ball. Imagine that. Then C, it makes a fucking sound out of the remote where the ball would have made contact, the pop sound of the ball. Now, I mean, tennis is one of my favorite sports. I actually still play tennis almost every week, like in real life. That's the only reason I'm not like 500 pounds. And I thought, as simple as the game was, and I, it's like a packaged and simple game, it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliantly done, it was very fun, and there was a lot of depth to it, and it was that simple. And all you needed was that little bit of feedback. But if you took Wii Tennis and you took away the rumble, you took away the sound, and hell, take away the whole controller, I would not have played that game for five minutes. And that's every Kinect game. There's no feedback whatsoever other than what's in your screen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, talk, it's, talking about, uh, I just want to say, talking about controllers, I, I really, really hope I can get like an Xbox controller mod for my new PS4. <laughs> that's all I got to say. There actually, Joel, is an amazing third-party controller coming out for PS4 that looks exactly like an Xbox controller, but with the screen on it, it looks fucking amazing, man. But, amazing. but even that, that, like the new Xbox, the Xbox One controller? Yeah. No, 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 it's, a, it's like for PS4... But it's it's like the old the, the Xbox 360 oh. controller is exactly what it looks like, dude. Oh, yeah. you mean the PS4 screen you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. like you know how the PS4 has that little screen thing on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it a screen or is it just a touch? It's pad? a touch pad. It's not a yeah, screen. Pad. It's a touch pad. Oh, on the PS4, it's, it actually it's touch as well, huh? Yeah, yeah. There's a touch pad on it. You know, Jared, I going back to your description of of connect and like the whole controller and moving your body I've never I've never heard it said that way before and I think it's it's funny that it, that really um, puts the emphasis on the fact that it's not a value add to not have something in your hand no it's you not know? Yeah. It, it really detracts from the experience it's like it's like if I'm playing connect I'd want a tennis racket I'd want you something in my hand feedback. you know yeah and you'd want to have especially if it has electronics in it that vibrates and makes yeah. noise like you know and it's great it's, it's, it's a bonus it's like it's like <coughs> oh Here's this like new revolutionary technology that gives you a shittier experience. It's like no one yeah. thought about the experience that like you do want something in your fucking hand when you yeah. play a game. Exactly. Like, they, they, it was, they made a console that every non-gamer in the world bought because it was so. It's yeah. exactly what they needed, and, which is what Jared's talking about, which is tactile feedback. Yeah, and what's 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 really like what's super amazing to me. We'll get off the Connect topic in a second, but what's really amazing to me. So Nintendo makes this piece of hardware that's proven. It's not a matter of debate. It's been proven. Um, by its reception and <laughs> by consumers that it works and it's fun and everyone bought it. They have this controller with the tactile feedback that totally works and makes games really simple and fun and every soccer mom buys it and loves it. We puts out another system. <laughs> they don't devote it to that, make you include that, make every game have that or do anything kind of weird or even expand on that. In fact, they don't do anything like that. They try a different innovation again and they try to again improve the interaction between user and game by adding this touch screen in the middle of the controller. Like the, Nintendo's always trying to innovate, but yet they, they bring in the old controllers. Meanwhile, Microsoft launched Kinect a couple years ago and maybe I fucking missed the boat on this, but I kind of am in touch with the gaming community. Nobody liked it. Like. No one's in the Kinect, not even soccer moms. Nobody gives a fuck. So their strategy is to come up with That's their next true. system and force it and make it mandatory and make it awesome. Like They took the Kinect more seriously than Nintendo took their own peripheral, I think. Or, or, or place. Anyway, I'll, I will never understand. I really wish I could fly on the wall in Microsoft's boardroom and I'm not afraid in any way to say that Microsoft, you need to fire some fucking idiots from your company. And yeah, whoever came up with Windows 8, sack them too. Dude, they're coming up with oh. Windows 8. They're shitting all over their <laughs> Xbox video game franchise. They spent they spent two console cycles building that brand. You know, <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars, and they're shitting on it because morons are in the wrong positions in their company. Derek, I, I have a theory about Windows 8. I, I think Windows has just accepted the fact that every uh, every second Windows version is going to bomb, so they put out a bomb on purpose, so that everyone's like, "Windows Nine is amazing!" It's like, True. and they're like, "Okay, the real Windows is the Windows 9. Uh Like, I, I just think, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they have just accepted that fact. Maybe because <laughs> yeah. there's. 
Dude, I had to use Windows 8. It's the prism of, of like the Windows world to be like they intentionally make every second version shitty. Or 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 they might just take the risk on every second version because they know well, they're, st they're still going to dominate. Apple you know? intentionally make your iPhone shitty with every new app update. Is <laughs> is iOS 7 out? Because... I don't know, but I'm scared to download it because I don't want my iPhone to operate like garbage. Oh yeah, because the last oh. time I updated to iOS 6, my son cried for 12 hours and I wanted to kill myself. As, uh... Well, Joel, the problem is, is the iPhone that you own. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, man. <laughs> you know what, Joel, it's your fault my son was two, but you're 30. Yeah, you what? went and bought that <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh... Made by Ch Chinese slave children. Hey, buddy, if you don't think every cell phone isn't made by slave slave like <laughs> labor, then you're crazy. Yeah. Like you, you, you every need, piece of material hey, made in no, the no. cell phone is comes from slave oh. labor. Yeah, if if, 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 if you no, there's no guilt free cell phone out there, dude. Dude, don't say that, man. Is there? Say there is there n minus the one guilt free, guilt -free cell phones. Cell phone, Hold on, dude. I'm gonna Google guilt free cell phone. What the? Do what? it, please. <laughs> um, no, hold on. No, like um, green cell phone, maybe. There is actually a company, and and last I saw them. The fuck? Oh, why can't I remember the name? <laughs> yeah, it's called Old School Landline. No. It's like, it's like that fucking you know thrift store like okay. classic red okay. phone that's like I, goes I, to I'm the actually, president. I, I don't even know what to, what, what to search for. Someone in chat, help me right now. There's a company. They were. It was either Kickstarter. Or they took pre-orders. But their whole model was, we are making a cell phone. It's not LG. It's not a major brand. We're making a cell phone that's totally green and totally, like, child labor friendly. And it's a 100% transparent What's process. What's it made out of? It's made out of, it looks like any other cell phone. But the entire process of getting it made is transparent. It's so you made out of dreams, made Joel. No, no. I just did a search for a green cell phone and it came back with a bunch of green colored cell phones. I did the same thing. <laughs> I literally... Wow, green Derek. I literally just typed green cell phone and then green Credo color mobile? cell phones came up and I'm like, oh, I'm stupid. Um, yeah, and, and honestly, if, if, if you're not buying iPhones just because of all the press that they've gotten recently for Foxconn, like you... Like the amount of stuff that's made in China that is um, uh, sort of uh, hey, equivalent in. What, what, what is the stuff that was published? Though the suicides at the the factory and shit like that. Oh, the the suicide nets they have, <laughs> like you know, permanently set up. Actually, if you do more research on that, dude, it, it that's not just like at that company. There's actually more suicides outside of of there. They just happen to choose to do it there. You know what I mean? It has nothing oh. to do with the the conditions at the fucking iPhone place. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah see... I, it, that, that's such a bullshit fucking uh, stat. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, I really don't know what's going on. Uh, most people don't really know what's going on there. They don't really know what's going on with the products they buy or where they're made or no, how but, ethical but, they are. But doesn't Foxconn have nets outside the windows to prevent... They, they literally do. Yeah, but, 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 but Foxconn true. might be the one, like, nice company that puts nets. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what you're saying, it might be worse than we know. Well, yeah, like, like we, we honestly don't know. Okay, we, I thought you were saying it might not be as bad as you know. I'm like, if you're putting safety nets around your fucking yeah. tower to stop people from killing themselves because your job sucks so bad. No, yeah, no, I'm saying it has nothing to do with the actual job and their life in general and people in that area. There is a large suicide rate. You know, so it doesn't, are, doesn't are, have to do with just that. Okay, factory. so. So are, the factory wasn't there. Dude, that might be, be a fair phone. I think that's it. Oh, thank you. If this is it, this, this is phone. it. Fairphone.com. Yes, this is it. Fairphone.com. So, Brand82, thank yes. you. Fairphone.com. Thank you, dude. Finally, someone found oh, it. Oh, eight, 9,000 phones sold compared to, like, like the iPhone. Wait, a, wait, a gazillion. What's hours left? You... Oh, for the limited edition. Assuming, like, either this is a scam or we just happen to find this page with only 17 hours left to pre-order your phone. Hmm. Maybe it's a scam because 17 hours, really? like Conflict-free conflict, conflict -free resources. Worker welfare. Yeah, yeah, no, the whole thing. No, no. You... How much is it though? How much is it? What, what's the premium you pay for? Uh... It's 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 honestly it's three hundred twenty five euros. So no more than any other cell phone. Mm. And, and uh -huh. hey, to be honest, man, like you yeah. pay um, what is it it's, for? It's obviously uh, it's a Android. new iPhone, like six hundred bucks without a contract. I would yeah. pay, you know, six hundred bucks is already a lot of money. I'd pay like a thousand bucks if I knew that it was conflict free. You know what I mean? Nice. That's like, this is really cool. I might get this as my Android because I I've been wanting to get an Android. Yeah. It, it, basically, it, 
the, the reason I didn't order a Fairphone already is because I just want to make sure someone else orders them and, and gets it first because I'm, I'm so paranoid. I'm just like, uh. And, and then, of course, we come to the website right now and it, like, really, 17 hours left and the whole thing's over? Like, because I, I knew it was like some kind of crowdsourcing thing. But anyways, apparently 80... Well, that's just for the limited edition, man. Oh, really? I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's just the limited edition. So, well, dude, if, if one of you guys buy it and get it in the mail and it actually arrives and it's good, this is the phone I'm going to get next. Just because... Hey, if, yeah, if, if one of you guys yeah. don't, if you oh. want the guinea pig and it works out, then yeah, that's fair buy, enough, man. Please and let us know. Uh, I, I, so, so basically, our value judgment is that we don't believe in the Fairphone principle enough to <laughs> test it out ourselves. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> actually, actually, I believe 100% the Fairphone principle, but I'm so, growing up in North North America. I am so cynical that I default to scam before legitimate business with great idea. That's what's yeah. sad, man. That's what's sad. I go to the website and I don't go, what a brilliant Oops. idea, I'm signing up. I go, this is too good of an idea. Um, it must be a scam and they're gonna steal my money. Isn't that, is that, I don't know. Yeah, well, it doesn't surprise me, man. I mean, uh, this There's guy no says, on Verifone yet. look at this. See, every, everyone, yeah, hey, the chat's talking. This guy says four hours left on his thing. Another guy says 11 hours left, and we saw 17 uh, hours left. Oh, wow. Yeah, see? And you know what? When I think, when I first came to this website, like a month what ago, the... I'm pretty sure it was it was within 40 hours the whole thing was ending. So it could, oh, it could wow. be that it's like uh, <laughs> scamming, so scamming the good people of yes, the world. you're like, man, I need to think of a scam. It's like, how do I take money from people who really want to do good for the planet? Yeah, it's like you, and you, put you, it in my pocket for cocaine and hookers. But you guys, is it possible it's time zones and that's why the hours are different? No, like, because 17 hours left is 17 hours left, man. It doesn't really matter. That's what my time first time thought was, was, was. Was uh, why why does time zones oh, have yeah, anything of course, to do with it? Of course, yeah. Somebody else was saying that, but if you think about it, it's like no, no, it's hours left. It doesn't say. It, yeah. 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 It's like, unless they're ending at 12 p.m. in every time zone for your time zone. But I mean, um, I first heard this. It was linked on TechCrunch. TechCrunch is, doesn't fuck around. It's like the leading. Like if you're like in a debt, if if you're a dev, like you check TechCrunch. It was a big thing, but this was like a couple months ago. And I'm pretty sure it should have ended by now. So don't don't go buy one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Do not go Unreal, buy a Fairphone right. right now. Unreal. Wait for people to get their Fairphones, come to TechCrunch or wherever and say, I got it and it actually works and it's actually a totally decent phone. Um, it, maybe I'm, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, rare, but, like, I actually just want my phone to, like, work. And I, as I long want as a I phone can... that I can actually store by my balls or something that I'm not worried about getting cancer. Oh, you that's, that, that's you hear a about different that 21-year-old girl that got breast cancer because she stored her phone in her bra? Is that real? What? Yeah, dude, that's fucking real shit. No, that can't be. Man, this 21-year-old girl got breast cancer, so they, they were like, oh my god, what? Like, there's never been that young before, you know? Like, what are your what are your habits? What are you doing? And they learned that she kept her cell phone in her bra mm -hmm. all the time, and it was on the left side, and that's where she developed the that cancer. That doesn't so, seem like, like science. I don't, I don't know, know yeah. You know, everyone in the chat right now, if you keep your cell phone in your front pockets, I need Thanks. you to she take your balls myself. in your hand right now. You need to roll your balls like this. You need to feel for bumps right now in the chat. Everyone grab their balls. Feel for bumps. You, Jeff's hey, we, we got I actually just got felt got yesterday in the shower. Cancer, I'm bump free. Kept his phone by his balls. Yeah, I know. We do have a buddy that got ball cancer, and he kept his phone right Thank you, there. Jared, for having me check my balls. <laughs> and by the way, and I, and I actually, I, I am going to point this out because it is actually of, 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 of. <laughs> Why are you guys shaking heads? Because <laughs> he just grabbed his balls, and oh. I was I was too dumb to like realize <laughs> as he's thanking me that he must have that uh, something. No, I have Jeff's balls in my hand right now. You got that from uh, Jason Lee and uh, um. <laughs> it was that fuck ball rats. Yeah, no, that was his ass though, man. That was like yeah, his ball ass sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jared, for telling me to check my balls because my friends. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, we can all learn something from this. Um, uh, I really want to smell my hand. Isn't that weird? <laughs> like my instinct as as an animal, like as an ape right Go now. Go wash because, it, man. Because we are apes. I, I wanted to like smell my hand. I'm like somebody's on my hand. <laughs> smell my okay, hand. Let's anyway. just wash this. Wash up. Let's okay, do it. wash up. I want. Oh, I had something to say quickly, and then now I forget. Ah, fuck. We'll keep, uh, 
<laughs> some why hand washing sound. There is. Actually, I can reach over. Why is Jeff so washing his hands and you aren't doing shit? Well, for one, his head, his hands had direct ball contact. Mine had indirect ball contact. That's a pretty big fucking difference. Whoa, are you just like leaning yeah. over, washing yeah, your hands? Yeah, there's open balls, dude. Yeah, there's a kitchen sink right here. I'm washing my hands right now, dude. Wow, I can't. And... That's, that, that does not look like a. Oh, yeah? Do you want to see the drips, bro? Do you want to see the drips? Ooh, is that dripping all over Mark's floor? Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I love how you guys put a bookshelf right next to the kitchen to provide. Oh, yeah, some we put that. To the background. Right before we got here for the stream, I'm like, Mark, you need to redecorate. I'm going to put that bookshelf <laughs> right there. <clears throat> um, oh man, I something to say. Looks sophisticated with the bugs back there, though. It wasn't about stink hand though. Uh, it was a mall rat stink hand. Yeah. Oh yeah, I want to say because people don't don't realize this. Here's me being. This is actually super serious. This isn't a fucking funny at all. There's nothing funny about what I'm about to say. Nothing funny. Did you know that the app? <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh already. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Testicular cancer. Okay, that's not funny. Okay, that's serious. The average age that hits men is pre-30. Wow. So when you think as a young guy, and a lot, I guarantee 90% no, of the guys in the chat right now are in their 20s, um, and you think, oh, it's, it's like prostate, it's ball catch, like when I'm 40, I'll start ro rolling my balls. Do not wait till you're 40 to roll your balls in the fucking shower. Check your fucking balls right now. I'm not fucking kidding. Check your fucking balls. It's exactly. literally, it's like 28 or something. It's, it's, it, it, as soon as you hit like 24 to like 32, that's the prime testicular cancer age. And in fact, after you're like 32 or something, oh, the doctors don't even really check you for that anymore because you've passed the age that that shit happens. And, and funny, because when I grew up, I just thought anything cancer is like old, old people, old people. It's like, no, 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 no. Ball cancer doesn't fuck around and hits you when you're young and your whole life depends on whether or not you roll your balls in the fucking shower and check that shit once a month. You're fucking up. You know, whatever. Yeah, right. fucking up. Man, ball what? cancer got Skype going. Ball cancer killed Skype. Man. You killed Skype, Skype the cancer, man. Uh oh. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. What's happening? Do you still hear me? My whole computer is very weird. Right. Oh shit. Can you still hear me? J Joel, I can hear you. Yeah, no, I'm still here too. And you're still there too. Yeah, it's just we've disappeared from the feed. Stream chat, can you hear me? I'm not laggy. Say yes, stream chat. Yes. Yes, Jared, we can hear you. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. All right, we're all good. I think we're all good, yeah. What the fuck happened there? What'd you do, Magic, magic Finger? Uh, I was doing this in front of the camera to have my balls, and then my whole computer almost shut down. And I think that was pretty much it. How was the workout? Nice. We got so we're all good, right? A couple of tough Let's ladies in here. Sweaty ladies. Half naked. Mm-hmm. Half naked sweaty ladies. Thanks, girls. If you would like to increase our viewership, you could uh, stand You could have worked camera. out right behind the camera. Let's see that shit. Can I flash them? Let's see that shit you right can, now. You can flash oh, them. I know you can uh, actually flash them. We, I can't actually no, them. we would lose our Twitch. Oh, yeah. We'll just uh, have to... I just remember. stopped a girl from showing you her boobs, by the way. Yeah. So that Chatterbait you, thing you never happened. You can thank me right? later. Fuck her. Chatterbait, next week. <laughs> <laughs> next week we're on Chatterbait. Uh, <laughs> Come. But you you can you can blame Twitch for that. Huh? Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, let's risk it. <laughs> let's risk it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, well, that's really smart. That's smart. Let's see how I do this. Okay, so we'll get back to E3 for a sec. I'm gonna mm -hmm. ask Derek. <clears throat> All of E3. All the games. That's the ugliest dude, looking dog ever. Does anyone see that dog? That's Hunter. <laughs> oh man. Hunter's awesome, man. It's a great Look at dog. That dog. <laughs> oh. You know, I used to have a miniature schnauzer when I grew up, and that's the only reason Derek has that dog. What? I have him too. Did he have like five or something? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh man. I had a miniature so, schnauzer. That, that was my dog growing up. Three men. I wouldn't mind getting back to E3, shit. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'll get back to E3. Not, I was, I was like, going to tell a story about how my dog died. Um, let's, get to, <laughs> <laughs> let's get to E3. Thanks, Derek. Um, yeah, all right, back to E3. I wanted to ask Derek, all of E3, one game. game. What, what are you most excited about? What one game, man? Fucking Smash Brothers, I think. Which is weird, because it's all about PS4 and Xbox, but as soon as I heard about new Smash Brothers, I was like, what? No way! So, so Derek, Derek, this what, no way, oh my god, Smash Brothers, how many days are you going to play it for? 
<laughs> That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> if it's a game I really like, it'll be two or three weeks. <laughs> two or three weeks, okay. That's good. You know, Darren you know, Spot's I thought for was Black Ops game. that he's never played. I thought Injustice was good. I was like, this is it. Injustice is the game that I'm going to take super serious. I'm going to go to tournaments and stuff. And I threw it in last night, and I was like, oh, I'm bored of this. Well, Derek, hey, uh, your, your, your longest game ever played, I think, was City of Heroes, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, and if I didn't have that the comic... That was for the comic version. I didn't have the comic. It was the comic, yeah, yeah. So maybe if I make a comic based on Injustice, then I'll keep playing. So, uh, uh, background info um, for this. Um, uh, Derek is a guy who plays a lot of games for short periods of time compared to myself. <laughs> And and for Jared and a week or two at a time. And and he's notorious for this. And in fact, Jer uh, Derek has got me into games like World of Warcraft, where we're going out, we're questing together. He's like, blah blah. I'm like, awesome, Derek. This game's awesome. I'm totally like level twelve now. And he's like, yeah, I'm done with that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm level twenty five. That's all I need with World of Warcraft. Level twenty five. You know, I kind of. But uh, what level did you actually stop playing WoW at, Derek? Was it? Oh, well, I made it to like thirty five. 35. That was that was pretty. City of Heroes was the only MMO that I actually maxed out. Actually, no. In Lord of the Rings Online, I played a lot of too because I love Tolkien. Yeah. So, yeah. So so I so every time Derek's like, you should check out this game. You should play it. We're, we'll play it together. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna play this awesome game together. And I'm like, awesome, Derek. Let's do it. And then it's like, I you know, I'm always like, oh, Derek. <laughs> Derek <laughs> stops like playing it. <laughs> Derek always wanted to play. Games with me on Xbox. Well, it's because there's been like ten more games come out. Game. And it'll be like ten yeah. minutes in. It's okay, just... I'm about done. I'm gonna go play yeah, something yeah. else. Now. And and honestly, what I, uh, I, I just I always imagine that the 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 amazement's totally equal and totally flipped. Derek's like, I can't believe you're still playing that same game. You know that like twelve other amazing games came out, and you're still playing that fucking stupid game. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. yeah you're missing yeah. out on twelve amazing games. What the fuck are you doing? It's uh, well, just imagine yeah. if you were really into movies and you had friends that watched one movie over and over. I know. Watching I know. All the awesome movies. I know. That kept coming up. I know. It's like... that, that's, not a, that's not a good analogy at all. It's not a. It's not. I would say at all. It's not a perfect analogy, but I can understand how it kind of fits. It's like, right? it's no, like... it would, a sports <laughs> would be better. Imagine a, imagine a friend that you had a, that was into sports, and all he played was one fucking sport over and over again. Yeah. It's not a sport though. It's a pastime. Well, that's, you know, that's the difference between you and me, my friend. Well, yeah, it, 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 Joel doesn't play anything professionally. You don't play anything professionally. But he plays a lot of different friends games. Play though. anything professionally? No, I, I don't play professionally either. Yeah, but I but... prefer to play hockey over baseball. You know, and I, I play hockey a hell of a lot more than I play baseball. I think I think video games compare to movies much better than they compare to sports. Because people don't go. Well, to play ooh, well that, you know what, that, man? that illustrates mm. that that illustrates your perspective and the difference of this opinion. Because it really does. Yeah, that's like, the fundamental like, difference. If, if my opinion is so rare, then why does a new game come out every week? Because let's, let's, that's let's, how most gamers no, are. Because that's your, how the industry is driven. Your your opinion is not rare. Well, you, well. In fact, I, I believe your opinion yeah. is is the majority. Yeah, but but um, let's 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 do a poll here quickly. Can can yeah. can someone link a. Uh, uh, a straw poll. What is that uh, website? Straw. Straw. We should do a straw poll. Um, okay. So, Chicken are, Man. Are, 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 are video <laughs> games more like sports or are they or more movies. like movies? Yeah. What is the closer match to video games? Chicken Man. Let's let's get it. Strawpoll.me. There. There it is. All right. Someone's got to get that going. You're <laughs> asking a bunch of pure ownage fans who are PC. Hey, 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 man. Wait, no, no, no. no. What, I'm not saying this is a general audience question. It depends on the genre. Exactly. I play games like, so I play sports games and racing games too. But yeah. there's a lot of games that I play because I just want a 15-hour single-player campaign to play through. Mm -hmm. Which is right. a very movie-like experience, right? You're like, this is a finite, a predetermined length experience. Um, not totally predetermined because I may be so bad it takes me 17 hours or so good it takes me 13 or something but um, it's a finite experience and you're, and you're paying up front you're saying I'm going to be entertained for 13 hours I'm going to get this and that's totally like consuming a movie same kind of thing I'm going to pay 15 bucks and be entertained for 2 hours or something it's just that when I approach games I literally approach them in the exact same way I approach games that we were taught in school like soccer in the field or hockey or anything else it's like there's a field and there's players and you master the interactions between the players and you master the strategies and you become better and better and better and and all of my reward like i feel so good like when i play league like even t like i played league yesterday and i actually sat back and i thought like man 
I am so much better than I was two months ago, which was so much better than two months before. And I get so much reward from that. Like all of my joy comes from identifying self-improvement um, mm -hmm. instead of being told by the machine, like, oh, you won the game or something and, and having the story. And, but, yeah. but although, not to say that it's like, I would still be into single player games if I felt the stories were that compelling. But like, I find it's, it's a needle in a haystack to find a movie for 90 minutes that can keep me engaged with its story. A video game at 20 hours, I've never seen it. Like a... Well, dude, well, it's I, I, funny I, I just want to remind Jared, though, there was a time when you played every RPG and every Zelda game. You fucking loved these games. No, last, time, last time we were drinking together, you were drunk and you're like, I miss that, man. I've lost something. I don't have it in my life anymore. And it's because you can have both. I don't want to. Uh, no, I could, yeah, I could, I could be a dick with my response, but I could also say, I'm not 12 anymore. And, well, and, and that might hold. I just want right? to say, say that that you can have both because I'm kind of sitting here in the middle whereas like I'm not exactly like Jarrett where I only play that one game and I'm like expert like getting be an expert at it I have my black ops which I play non-stop and I've been playing it since it's come out but I, I, I'm also like Derek where I do like to consume like as many as I can you know what I mean but still have that one game that I fall back on and play a lot of and I wanted Injustice to be that game for me, but there's something in me that's broken, and I can't. I just can't. League of Legends, make that your your fallback. That's my fallback. It hasn't disappointed me yet. I'm still like, I, you know, I actually picked up. I picked up Crusader Kings 2 uh, a few weeks ago. It was on a Steam sale. I actually, <laughs> it was my only game on the Steam wish list because of the Game of Thrones mod. To, I don't know if you guys are into Game of Thrones, but I, I've read all the books, so I can't be spoiled. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are in the Game of Thrones. No, no, I don't Everybody's know if you're in the Game Everybody of Thrones. Everybody watches the TV show. I mean, if you read books and you've read it all, because uh, the mod will spoil you if you haven't read the books, um, you you have to get... It, it's yeah. so fucking good. Like, it's, yeah. it's it, it hands you the entire Game of Thrones world, and you get to marry yeah. off whoever you want to marry off to whoever and create your own families. It's amazing. Yeah. What to is be this? honest, man, to be honest, I really, really want to read the Game of Thrones books because I can just feel how much the the tv show is lacking just because so many scenes don't make sense to me and i know they would if they if i read the books but jared no what were you talking about with like that that's a great point but i'm really interested in what jared was talking about like what was that with where you can set up the relationships and marry different people in game of thrones what there's there's a game called Crusader Kings 2. It's made by Paradox Games, <clears throat> and it's it's considered the genre. I, I I don't know if they describe it, but it's called Grand Strategy. I wouldn't call it turn based. It's definitely not real time, and it's it's very mature. Like I, I really don't see any 12 year olds playing this game in the world because the majority of the strategy comes with um, uh, strategies and who you micromanaging you, bullshit yeah. and like micromanaging you know. all the things like who are you going to marry your daughter or your son off to managing all your faction relationships with all the other countries and it's all historically accurate like the actual game is totally historically accurate uh, or almost totally sorry and it's it's all Europe in the feudal age and <clears throat> you're looking at like you know I think like 10th to 14th century uh, so so anyways so you have a family like your house Lannister well you're you know your house suite and you have your children and and you you have to marry your kids up to your people make the right alliances make whatever and try to make your house your family your dynasty as big as possible which I think is really cool like you're basically you're fucking Tywin Lannister and you're like how big can I make my family and then a huge group of people right away th this game came out a year or two ago um, made a Game of Thrones full conversion mod to this game and so when you, you install the mod you play, instead of all Europe, it's fucking Westeros. And it's like you play That's as, great. yeah, you're either the, uh, the Ironborn or you're, you're, you're running King's Landing or you're the Starks. And then you can choose to marry Did, Arya to, 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 uh, to isn't reek. Isn't like a copyright See what happens, you know? Well, it's a mod. It's a mod, right? man. It's a mod. It's just a, a user mod, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, no one's making money on it. So no, they can't do shit. Oh, I guess not, yeah. I guess not, eh? So, sounds like Masters of Orion three level of strategy, like a real deep, like really like deep, it's it's yeah. like minutia level, like you know dealing I with would things. Love that... to play that, dude. I'm just constantly looking for new experiences in gaming because now when I buy an FPS or something, I'm like, okay, yeah, I just want something I've never played anymore, which is why I jumped on Monster Hunter and a couple other things. So. Yeah, man, this sounds like something I've never done before. I would love to try that. And that's why I, that's why I bought it. Um, I actually it was on a Steam summer sale last summer, for like seventy five percent off, which made it fifteen bucks. I think it's like a sixty dollar game, you know. 
and um, and the, but I didn't get it. And then after it was on sale, I started reading about it. I read about the Game of Thrones mod, and at the time I wasn't quite finished the books, and it said don't play the mod till you're done the books. And I was like, ah. So I put on my wish list. It's my only game on wish list, and I waited. And like just the, like last month, it went on sale, and I finally picked it up and been pissing around. And it is cool, man. Like, but but it's a very old man game, in my opinion. It's like it's, you know, I, I just like it's not. <laughs> it's so far from Twitch or from active engagement. It's it's so sit back and plan your family's dynasty. But I, I think it's cool, man. Like, I, I really it's, dig Game of Thrones. And, you know. What's it called again? I'm gonna see if I can get it right now. Crusader Kings 2. And I'd actually recommend anyone, even if you're not into this genre of game, go to YouTube and, and uh, search Crusader Kings 2 and watch their official marketing videos they put out, Paradox mm -hmm. Games. Hilarious, dude. These guys are hilarious. Like, whoever works at Paradox has a great sense of humor. And they put out these videos that are so fucking funny, man. Like, yeah, hey, you, uh, for that alone, I wanted to support yet? the company. I watched the first four episodes so far. Yeah, how are you that, liking it? That Viking show, I couldn't get past the first episode, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, 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 I'm trying. I'm trying to get into it. But honestly, man, I just it's, finished it's, reading all five um, books of Game of Thrones. I just like, I, it's no Game of Thrones in my opinion, man. It's like, it's just it's. Whoa, whoa, it's, whoa! What? Game of Thrones, the TV show or the books? Both. Because those are two different things, man. No, no. The, well. The books Man, are like here, the TV show is like here. There are a lot here. of problems with the TV show. A lot of problems. There are, and, and there's a lot of... I think they're all right with you because you understand a hell of a lot more because you're reading the books, but holy fuck, a lot of shit I'm just like, man, that made no sense to me at all. <laughs> it, it could be. I'll never know because I've, I've always been ahead of the TV show. I've never, um, <clears throat> yeah, never been behind. But, uh, but Game of Thrones is, is so deep. It's so complex. There's so many characters, and their motivations aren't predictable. And oh. whereas I watch Vikings and it seems just... It's it's a more cut and dry good guy bad guy. I know who the bad guys are. I know the good guys are. I can I, I can, I've generally so far been able to pretty accurately predict what's going to happen because it, it follows a, a very standard structure. Whereas Game of Thrones, like, you oh, it's, there's you nothing on it, TV like that. There's nothing like that. Like you don't have stories where they get you to love a character and then kill it and then get you to love another one and kill it. Like George R. R. Martin's a fucking sadist, dude. Like a sadist. Like, yeah, well, literally. Well, well, Jared, someone just wrote here that the the well, writer that a lot of main characters <laughs> die in Walking Dead. The, the, the writer that writes Game of Thrones is a dick. Okay. Someone said that. And, yeah. um, oh, dude. Well, I almost keep, stopped reading keep, the series. Keep, read being, the yeah. keep being a dick. Um, yeah. Be as dick as you want. Dick to dick dick. Just keep writing. <laughs> like, stay alive as long as you can. Lose weight, please. Go exercise. Um, <laughs> you know, honestly, dude, this guy, as far as writers go... Um, I hope that I can read more things that he writes, and I hope that he lives longer than me. Um, I hope yeah. he lives long enough to finish it because it's it was originally a trilogy, that's really funny now, and then he says it's going to be seven books. <clears throat> well, and there's only been five, and honestly, man, at the end of the fifth book, you're still like, I, I can't even imagine how he's going to wrap this all up in two books without yeah. major plot holes or just ignoring characters he's made like yeah. he built the world too deep in fact you know to be totally honest which i know Go is ahead. not public opinion i have a lot of problems with game of thrones like in both the books and the tv well, show hey are we giving are we giving out like any kind of spoilers here? don't like, spoil are there, are there any no spoil no, no. <clears throat> okay so I, I won't say my piece there because the, there is a lot of it just seems so pointless to me dude you, know? you haven't read the books yeah, I do. I do have a um I yeah, actually that's what think, I'm saying, and that's what I'm saying. As a TV watcher, I'm like, okay, well, what was the fucking point? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, when you read the books, and I, I like, they are great, and I understand he built a very rich world, and I think a lot of the appeal is that, is that, that this world seems so real because he spent so much time detailing it, and in fact, it's it's the closest thing that that I remember. Although I've not, I haven't read them side by side, so don't call me. But but what I remember when I first read Tolkien, like Lord of the Rings, when I was like a teenager. I was like, wow, there's so much unnecessary description. Like, fucking get on with the story. I don't need to know how every tree looks. And when you read Game of Thrones or the A Song of Ice and Fire, you're like, Jesus, fuck. You might enjoy it. Do you have to describe every dinner they eat down to the ingredients used in the fucking meal? Every, and you can't eat, you cannot read this series hungry. Every second chapter has a... No, you can't. It's like, oh, I'm the succulent... Dude red. loves his and food. Yeah. yeah, he... No, dude. He loves his food and he loves his child rape. It's like two things that you know... <laughs> he George... loves his child rape. Oh, yeah, man. No, man, no. He loves... Dude, you can tell a lot about the author by reading his book, man. I think I know, I know George pretty well, There's not a lot well, of man. child rape in the TV show. You know, the, the, the books are pretty hardcore, man. 
they're well, they just made all the characters adults, though. <laughs> well, I guess so, like, like, uh, well, well, child, child, see, child whatever, rape is she's like, be like 14 or 15 or something, isn't she? Yeah, but like, you know, in France, what's child rape? In, you know, in, in medieval France, what's well, child rape? In modern like, France, it's, 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 uh, 13 and under would be rape. 14 yeah. over, legit. Yeah, um, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh Roman uh, Polanski, right? Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. hiding out because, as far as France is concerned, he didn't commit a crime. But yeah. the United States thinks that uh, he committed a crime, and yeah. I will not have a position on that issue. Either. But see, what what I do really love to get off Game of Thrones, but what, what what I love more than anything else about Game of Thrones is there is no good guy, bad guy, um, objectively. When maybe in the TV show it's it's slanted a bit more, but really, you read the books, you're like. There is a, a lot of intelligent and complex oh, characters, and they all have their own agenda, and they all have their own rational interests. That if you were any one of them, you would probably do the same thing. Like, it all makes sense. All their behavior makes sense. But there's no, like, oh, I'm empowered by God to be good, and I'm Satan, and I'm bad. Like, I'm just so, I'm so tired of good versus evil in every single fucking thing I read that when you read something that's legitimately yeah, political, true. like, legitimately understanding there's no such thing in this real life as good and bad. There's only, I, there's only people with different interests. Right? Somewhat in the TV show and the fact that, like, even now I'm starting to feel sorry for a guy like Jamie Lannister, whereas in the first couple <clears> seasons I was like, that guy's such an asshole. Dude, how do you feel about uh, about uh, uh, Reek? Fuck, uh, what's his yeah, Reek. Pre, what's his pre name? <laughs> Sorry, he's been Reek to me for so long. <laughs> he could go eat a dick, man. Yeah, and, and it, Say, dude, you just spoiled shit so much by saying he's been Reek to me for so long. Dude, I read book three two years ago. How yeah, did he spoil that, dude? So okay. now we know that Theon doesn't die for like three That's books. Right. Thanks. Actually, you. You don't. You don't know that. <laughs> so, anyway, you d you don't know that, and uh, Theon Greyjoy is, is is an example of a guy that. You almost who, it worse, Derek. Yeah, honestly, Derek. Um, it, who who who, in you know who could you like if you look at it was it the first season when he burns down Winterfell at the end. Sorry for the spoilers, Derek. If you haven't seen season one of Game of Thrones, you're way behind in life. But like you can't even imagine ever feeling anything for Theon Greyjoy. At the end of the, the first book, or maybe the second book, is it? You're just like, I want to see this guy suffer more than anyone's ever suffered. Fuck him! He killed Bran. He killed Rick. And fuck this guy. Kill his innocent people. And then, and then you, you get far in the series, and you're just like, you feel sick, and you just want to help and save this guy because which is what is nobody. He's I'm so good at that. Nobody, so nobody good deserves at that. what he goes through, right? It's it's just like you're watching oh, yeah. season three. Be because I feel bad for Theon and I feel bad for Jamie Lannister, which was the two characters I wanted to see suffer more than anyone well, else. Well, well, Derek, honestly, like, like, we're we're full on spoilers here, but like, honestly, I'm like, I'm like nailing it into my brain. He threw fucking the kid out the window. He threw the kid out the window. I'm like, yes. but I, oh, like, I want to help he him. He pushed Brad out the window. He pushed Brad out the window. And then meanwhile, you're like, poor Jamie in his hand. Oh, yeah, his fucking he hand. He murdered an 11 year old. Kid, yeah, kid can't fucking really walk, walk off, man. You guys, because we're spoiling shit. <laughs> People say that, and then our, our, our stream numbers go up, so. Yeah, man. Honestly, uh, like, like <laughs> not walking. Like, come on. Like, anyway, okay. Boo hoo hand. We'll, All right. we'll get back to gaming. It is the appearance stream. Sorry. Uh, um, we'll get back to Gaming of Thrones. Don't worry. <laughs> gaming of Thrones. <laughs> That's the name of the stream now. I, okay, we're going to get back to E3. Because there's, there's still so much. Like, at the very beginning of stream chat, someone asked me about. Um, Look at these. I, I don't think the they girls know drying our clothes. Everybody can like, like, guys. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> There's a dress try-on contest behind us that we're totally not enjoying. Is is that what you're wearing to the wedding? Uh, but um, it's hard for me to get excited about anything E3 when Last of Us comes out tomorrow. A couple people have asked about it, dude. Last of Us is going to. Be, I can't wait. I I'm buying two uh, copies of it. What? One, when, what? One, wait, when, two when, two copies? Of, what? Yeah. No, well, see, so, so you're gonna this play is the it Derek down. perspective. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna play it for for uh, for four weeks then. He's right? gonna buy two copies of it. One he'll never open, and I'll be sitting there going, "Damn, I wish I could play fucking Last of Us." <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna be sitting there going, damn, I wish I could play this fucking game. <laughs> 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 jo Joel's that guy you see memes on in slash our game, and it's like, get invited to friend's house to play a game, watch him play all night. <laughs> Dude, Joel, come on, check out Last of Us! It's like, implies you might get to play something. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I
and he gets yeah, pretty and much, he just has much. to wait four or five days until I'm done with it and then he gets it. So I don't see it being that bad of a deal. <laughs> That's true. That is true. I just can't play it right away. <laughs> uh, I've heard that game is, is nothing but phenomenal though. Well, Dude, I, Last of Us, I can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm a huge noob here, but I'm gonna be an honest huge noob, and I, I actually don't really know don't really know what that is. I mean, obviously I've heard of it. Oh, dude, have you seen the the, the game no. footage? I've seen the, the box insane. art. I've seen the pre-sale numbers. I've and I've heard everything business about the game, but it's I don't. Naughty dog, fucking Crash Bandicoot. I couldn't even tell you how many players, or if it's You're multiplayer going back or anything. Crash Bandicoot, dude. That's their best credit still. Really? It's, it's the so Crash right? Bandicoot team. Huh. All right. Anyway, I didn't know that. I know that um, it's outselling the Xbox One in pre-sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that part. Um, hey, man, my camera wor Oh, no, my camera doesn't. My camera works. My app's just not fucking up to date. Shit. People bitching about me not being on camera. Yeah, uh, well. Get on fucking Apple's case, man. Shit. Jeff, can I lick your eye? Well, you know, it's just... Can I lick your eye? For the stream? Oh man, only if you lick your balls first. Yeah. And that is that that is something that I think is impossible. So that that just basically tells you how much you want you to lick my. Not impossible for everyone. We knew a guy. We knew a guy. Who? That uh, I can't say. <laughs> well, I could say his name is Phil. There's not Phils in the world. We only knew one Phil. But uh, he could do that. Oh yeah, he man. Could, he could do it. Phil could do that it. That guy not named yeah. Phil. <laughs> could do it. It's true. Um. That's right. And uh, in fact, there was just uh, there was a question on Reddit like last month. This, this is so random, but just some mom was like, you know, ask Reddit like, I walked in on my son. <laughs> a lot of moms are like, shit, I walked in on my shh, guys. Uh, I I walked in. And, you know, there's a lot of like, I walked in on my son masturbating. Like, what do I do, Reddit? How do I respond to this one's like, I walked in on my son blowing himself. What do I do? And I'm like, oh, you're Phil's mom. <laughs> I that the top response was, "You do nothing. You learn your lesson. You don't fucking walk into his room anymore." Yeah, be like, was, like, was, was that like, the top? Because that should be the. Was that the top response? That was the top response. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's right like what's gonna way. stop? Either your son masturbating, or either you Dude, stop walking in. You should be. You should give your thumb a your son a fucking high five. Hey, so I I, I have a question gifted. for for the parental units in this uh, unit here. Yeah, um, the bathroom up the back. All right. Well, Derek's in the bathroom. It's a good time for my question. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, people who have babies and who have children, who uh, I'm not among that. Um, so I was at a restaurant recently, and uh, you know, Joel, Joel and Jared might be able to help me out with this. But... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that comment. Oh, what? just to close off the deep story, it's like I can do that too, but it's not as cool as you think. It's closer to sucking a dick than getting a dick sucked. <laughs> That story is closed forever. That guy just that's it. That's the nails in the coffin. The story's done. Never brought up again. Sorry. It's more about it's sucking a dick than yeah. it is that's getting. That's gold. That is fucking gold. Okay. That's awesome. So uh, uh, I was in a restaurant and um, the whole. I want to know about the whole screaming kid in the restaurant issue. Um, so I was in the restaurant. I'm not a parent, and there's a kid screaming like so loud and so frequently that it was, you know, first world problem here. Interrupting my order, you know, like the 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 server comes and is like, so what? You guys want some appetizers, some drinks? It's like I'll have a like crazy kid scream from like like interrupting like the she stops talking, I stop talking like, uh, and then we're waiting for the kid to stop screaming, and then we're like, ah, uh, yeah, I'll have this. Like you know, we're we're actually like seated beside this kid. We're sort of thinking, do we ask for not be seated beside, but. So I hear, um, you know, maybe this is not true at all, but apparently um, uh, you grow tolerance for these sort of things when you have a child and you understand. And, you know, but, but it still remains a mystery to me as a non-parent that, um, you know, that you don't go to the fucking restaurant, eat at fucking home. Yeah, and, uh, you definitely grow a tolerance too. Like if that, if I was you in that situation, I probably wouldn't have been yeah, as sure. aggravated. But at the same time, if I was the, if I was those people with the child, I would have taken the child out of the restaurant a long time ago. You know? Oh like yeah, if, like if like my, my we'll have our fucking food to fucking go. 
yeah. we will leave. <laughs> Yeah. All the other people will stay. So there's, there's our a, fucking yeah. kid will go. Yeah, there, there's, and, there's, there's, there's a couple of problems, Kate, okay. because um, a lot of people are like when you, when you're a parent, you become used to it. Yeah, yeah. You become yeah. used to the specific, exact frequency of your own children's screams. You become no more tolerant of other children's, at least in my but opinion. You don't think so, no. dude? Because I've, co- I've become more tolerant of other, of other kids, okay. somewhat. You know, a it's my own bit personal more. experience. Um, maybe a little. Like, I'm talking if before I was 100% intolerant, now I'm 95. But still, like, when I hear another kid, especially if it's around my son's age, and he's less behaved than my son, that, like, for some reason extra aggravates me because I know there's a parenting fail involved. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but even to this day, when other babies cry, it's not like I'm like, oh, baby. It's like, if my son cries, oh, no fucking problem in the world. I'm used to it. However, in public, but I'm also very anxious socially already. I'm so conscious. If if T's making any fuss in public, it's my number one concern to like make sure that this is nifty. More than your food getting in your fucking mouth, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Obviously. Like dude. more than sitting down and dude. eating. You know. Obviously. So dude. here's the but, kicker. But this. I'm gonna follow this up and say that. Okay, follow it up. In all of my restaurant experiences, of which we bring him to restaurants on a weekly basis and have since he's born, we probably had at least a hundred plus experiences. That's happened maybe once or twice, and and in those cases, you know, you, you deal with it when it comes. But it's probably it's so systemic. It's it's far beyond that dinner. Like if, if their kid is can't behave himself in public, it's because they failed as a parent now, before that. Like, let me long before. Let yeah. me add to the story here. There's more to the story. So here's the kicker. So it was with the mother, the child, the sister, who was maybe four. The kid's probably two. Who was screaming his ass off. And the grandparents, so four of them total. And uh, so she was talking, and I was overhearing um, this idea that, oh, boys do this. You know, the kid's screaming, and she's explained to the grandparent, oh, yeah, boys do this, boys. You know, boys at this age, they go through a phase where they scream in restaurants. And there's also a phase with boys at this age that parents take the kids to restaurants, uh, apparently. So uh, this kid's fucking screaming his head off. And then the mom leaves to take the sister to the bathroom and leaves for five minutes. Dead fucking silence. Nothing. Beautiful dinner. Just eating. Just (laughs) nothing. Zero problem. (laughs) The mom comes back instantly. And I remarked, I, I was, I was noticing this. I'm like, I'm like, hey, like this kid's fucking, it's quiet as fuck. And then the mom comes back, scream, scream. And then she's like, oh, covering the mouth, attention, reinforcing behavior. Like, man, I'm like, you, I almost, <laughs> I wanted to go up, but I'm, I'm not an, a confrontation guy. I wanted to go up and say, you are reinforcing this behavior. I have empirical evidence. <laughs> and I will present it to you. Like, honestly, man. Like, so, hey, there, there's my question for you for a parent. You were saying, you were suspecting, without these details, that the, the, the parental strategies were um, enforcing this behavior. And so the mom leaves, no screaming. Is, is, is that accurate or is that just like... It's totally accurate. <clears throat> it's, it's not a chance. And in fact, um, and I've been on the fence either way, but before your parent, you're like, ah, kids are kids. Because you remember being a kid, and you're like, I was my own man. When but I, was I wasn't 11, a fucking asshole kid. No, but I wasn't. So, but that was my own choice. Right? That's how we like to feel because we want to give ourselves credit for being well behaved. Uh, of people. course, yeah, yeah. So us, you know, as people, we want to devalue the effect our parents had on raising us. And then, of course, parents definitely want to overvalue their role as parents. And it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. But, but, but it is a fact. Um, although it is a fact that some, some kids are born with behavioral disorders. So, like, if your kid is born with, like, a genetic antisocial behavioral disorder, then you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. You're fucked. Yeah. But, but 99.9% of the time, it's because you don't understand fundamentally, like, uh, fundamentally, like, how people are apes and you you grow and learn from your environment and 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 you aren't predetermined at birth by some divine power to how you're going to be you are who you are based on your environment with a com a very small combination of genetics etc etc nature and nurture yeah it's nature and nurture and it's it's you know we'll just say it's 50 50 to say whatever but regardless you can out nurture some pretty bad nature and it's funny that like i often see parents in these such situations that 
And maybe I got lucky. Maybe I'm just an asthma because I rolled a good dice and, and my kid's well behaved because I focused on him so much in his behavior for three years. But maybe that had nothing to do with it. He just, his genetics made him that way. I don't know. But, Man, um, but uh, honestly, like uh, after hearing your response and having a reinforcement, because I, I, I was thinking I would write an essay pre parental experience, post parental experience, and compare the like, you know, hey, there's a kid screaming in a restaurant. How do I feel about that? You know, and then be like, because I had heard a lot of things about parents sort of rationalizing that and being like, well, if you're mad at a screaming kid, you just, it's just beyond your experience why you should tolerate that. Yeah. Grow a little bit, understand more about the world and the universe, yeah. and then be tolerant of this thing. Yeah. Or maybe I shouldn't be tolerant of a dagger in my fucking eye. <laughs> you know? no. like, Man, it's, it's, like, it's again, it's, and I, I think like I attribute a lot of it not because I took any, I, I don't have any education in parenting or, or even education. I don't have an education in education. I have an anthropology 201 background and maybe because yeah. I just approached it um, with a, a more scientific approach. But, but really... Um, I've always been conscious of, yeah, reinforcing the type of behavior. If your kid cries and you, and you reward them with, with the, what they were crying for, that's the dumbest fucking thing you can possibly do. And yeah. in, in that situation, by the way, when, and it's happened maybe a couple times in three years where, you know, and it happens. The kids zoo? don't nap or kids or whatever. The and they, and they, yeah, the zoo was mm -hmm. the one experience will stick out. Then you pick them up and you go. And you, you just let, fucking leave. You, leave. you go home. You're, you're like, right hey, away. I have a kid. And then they start I'm screaming, go like, home. why am I leaving? And you let them know that you left because they broke a certain um, behavioral code. Yeah. And that's why we left. And, they, and you let them cry the whole way home, and you let them cry, 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 cry. But the reality is, they left, and the punishment was there, and you did not re respond to it. Yeah. And, and they do learn. They're not retarded. And then you're like, wow, the last time I was a total asshole, we just left, and I got to miss out on everything. And then they don't do it again. But if, if you just appease, 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 you've got Nazi Germany, and, and, uh, and that's what happens, man. So. Well, hey, I will confront next time. Um... But, you, but at the same time, you can never confront a parent because all parents are the best parents ever. So if you would actually go up to that mom and be like, you know, you might consider not positively reinforcing Would I have, no effect. Would you, I have no effect? You, in fact, would have then, um, um, she would have yelled at you in front of her kids, which would reinforce to her kids that yelling at strangers for giving a rational opinion is a good thing. And then her kids would have been worse people as a result of you trying to educate her. Oh, it would not have been yeah, good for society. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't have been good for society. Oh. You actually would have hurt society by trying to let her know because she would have just fucking flipped. Jeez, really? And be like, I'm a fucking mom, motherfucker! Because there's a mom thing, man. Like, when you're a mom, all of a sudden there's you're just like... There's a mom motherfucker there thing is, going I've on. Seen, I've seen videos of moms in classrooms at university that are like, they're taking like physics and then professor would be like, and uh, 9.81 meters per second squared things fall and someone's like, excuse me, I'm a mom and uh, pfft, I noticed when my kid dropped something, I think it was like 11 meters per second. And it was it my kid. With, I'm a mom, and it was my kid, so what the fuck can you say? Yeah. And if you say something that uh, contradicts it, I'm going to fucking fight you, because that's so, my so, kid. So as a parent, and as a mom and a dad, what, yeah. how, where does that come from? Where does that righteousness, that imported righteousness on a lot of other issues, 100% parent? Instinct, to pro it's bio-altruism, and it's, you're just yeah. protecting at all costs your infant. And it's also a narcissistic need that almost every human has to not ever admit faults. So it's a combination of your own narcissism and bio-altruism, which makes you um, believe it. <laughs> Derek's yawning. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Basically, all, if you want to understand parents, all parents' kids are perfect, and most humans believe they are perfect, especially as parents. So yeah. to, to try to come into that and be like, maybe your parenting wasn't perfect and maybe your kid isn't perfect, you're going to get punched in the face, dude. So, right. so a bunch of babies played Xbox One and didn't complain about the faults, and then their parents made decisions, basically. I'm trying to bring it back to gaming, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we go. There's my segue. <laughs> <laughs> every every time I think we get up way off topic, I'm like, man, I don't even want to look at our viewers. It's like they just go up, and it's like, let's play some games, Jeff. It's like, all right, <sighs> scams. Ready for some scams? scams? Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's scam some shit, and I'll tell you about it. And I'm out of, actually out of scam stories because I didn't scam that much. But I'm gonna go back to Derek because it's a rare thing to have this level of like knowledge on the stream with the console so we'll go back to e3 it's still e3 we, we, we should we should take advantage of derek's presence in this if uh, i recall game. sorry when i said what one game he said smash brothers which actually really really caught me off um because you because i did not expect a wii u yeah. game i mm -hmm. sorry derek i did not expect you to answer smash brothers there's dude I've, the nintendo still has my heart like always like because they just make the best fucking games they do they make the best 
Yes. You just release the system and then don't release any games for it until a year after. That's all. Yeah. Like, I, the, yeah, I, I wish that they would release a real... I wish they had released a more powerful console. I wish the Wii U was double the power that it is, because I think everybody would be talking about it if they did. Dude, it's true. I mean, um... It, 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 I, only... I disagree. I think I think Nintendo it has its own niche, man, and uh, it's always going to have that own niche, and and that's kind of it, you know. I don't really consider when I consider like console wars, like Nintendo's kind of on its own, like over there on the side, you know. Yeah. So and then and then that aside too, there's the division. I love Tom Clancy games. So when I saw oh new Tom Clancy game, wow that's pretty cool. But then Joel pointed out it, t- it takes like halfway through the video before he realized that it's not pre-recorded voices. It's supposed Dude, to. Dude, be- that Tom Clancy video was such bullshit. It's like sitting there, yeah, halfway through. I'm like, oh, this is supposed to be you and your friends communicating like this. Okay, fuck right off, because there's no way in hell any of my friends communicate like that. Joel's very upset that they actually scripted it out. And it's talk like, to me what, like what I'm a fucking real person, for Christ's sake. What did you expect them to do? You thought they were going to wait? Uh, well, I don't know, man. I didn't expect Dude, them to sit there and have this like pre-recorded, like, wow, do you see that? What is that over there? Oh, I think that's Manhattan. Let's go check that out over Okay, over. Ah, <laughs> Joel. <laughs> That's good. God, man. <laughs> yeah, so the division looked really good. I was stoked on that. Uh, the Metal Gear stuff wasn't anything really new. I haven't seen a lot of games footage yet because I've I've been super busy with work, and any opportunity I can get out to go practice for just for laughs, I'm doing that too. So I honestly haven't even seen a lot of E3 footage yet. Derek, we should just uh, we should just plug all your shit right now, dude. Because uh, uh, it, yeah. it's it's good stuff, and and I don't want you to have to look for segues. And, uh, uh, because a couple of people way early on like, so who the fuck is Derek Sweet? How is he related to Pierre? Let's talk about what Derek Sweet is. So Derek has never actually been in the previous Pierre's work. Not to say he might not be in the movie, motherfuckers. But <laughs> Derek it isn't <laughs> just my best friend since we were kids and has played everything ever. But he's also a professional comedian and very funny and very smart. So I'm going to give this opportunity. That Derek, if you're familiar with Canada, Just for Laughs is like a big comedy festival. And if you're familiar with comedy on a global scale, it's actually like a world-renowned festival that he's performing in very soon. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so if you want a comedian who's actually like smart and actually funny and actually makes some jokes about gaming that aren't written by a guy who has never played a fucking video game, you should check out his work. And just Google him. I'm not going to plug shit. Google Derek yeah, hey, Sweet. That's his fucking name. Derek Google him. Actually, and if Derek's he doesn't come up on his own man. Google, then he's a fucking retard. So fuck it. Google Derek Sweet, man. There you go. No, no, no. Derek's voice is not in Pure Honors. I think it's my impersonation of Derek's oh, voice. Oh, your true. impersonation Derek. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He did control the character, though. I was the... Oh. I was like... In the machinima, I was controlling the female character, the Jared's character. Like, nice. what was the, I can't remember the characters. In the, Derek's in the movie, right? It was some wild. You were, you were a total spoil. You gotta be in the movie. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. you gotta be in the movie. Derek's in the movie, man. Um, anyway. He wants me to tell a joke. It doesn't work like that, dude. Okay, and let you know. I'll, I'm glad I have this opportunity. If you ever meet a comedian in real life, and Derek's a real, actual comedian, don't ever, ever say the words "tell me a joke" ever. It's well, like, I have my joke preloaded that I for when people say, but it's a joke that I heard Maynard Keenan say on stage at a Tool concert. He said, uh, "How do you stop a dog from humping your leg? You pick him up and suck his dick." <laughs> Golden. Golden. <laughs> Bill gave him that joke, man. There's no way he. <laughs> no, that's that's uh, Maynard Keenan said that. Oh yeah, Bill gave Maynard the joke. You're saying yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. Fun. Dude, the response in the chat is, is epic. Yeah, it's pretty funny. There's oh, Derek's joke. Six there. people said LOL, and you, that's epic. Dude, well, it's, dude, it's still going, there, there was some all caps, lots of O's in the middle of the When people start hitting their so. caps, like, you know, you, you fucking affected bitches. Uh, okay, I guess there's quite a lot. Well, they keep coming in. Yeah, life changing. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, so personally, of all of E3, of all the game launches, I mean, I actually watched the whole Microsoft release. I watched, mo- I tried to watch most of Sony's, um, even though I now I already knew they were going to win. Um, but honestly, like, and maybe I'm just a fan, but I don't know. But like, of every game, because 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 there's two things I want to mention. One later, Mario Kart 8 is the most exciting game for me of the whole con. So sure, there's there's Titanfall and there's 50 million dollar AAA brown FPSs. I think there was like, was there 18? 
40 million dollar brown FPS is announced, Derek? I don't remember how many brown FPSs were announced <laughs> you at mean, E3 this year. So like, whatever shit. Yeah, just like, I, when I look at Titanfall, I see Halo 5, and then I, I see Destiny, and I see every other fucking limited color palette FPS saw, with the exact same control scheme and no imagination whatsoever, but... I no. saw a great meme on Reddit where it had a picture of the cover of Call of Duty Ghost and it said, let's just call it what it is, and it was Call of Duty 2K. Dude, <laughs> and you know what, and, and everyone up, yeah, I saw that, it was, it was on the front page, I mean, who didn't see that? It's like, of course, but at the end of it's like, I, I actually, when I approach that, I don't see it as a burn, I see them like, yeah, dude, like, at what point do you stop trying to create, like, names for it that relate to the stuff? Story? Does anyone know the story? Does anyone care? Maybe I'm that out of touch and people do. I don't know. To me, who, who COD is like... those fucking things for the story, man? I want, I want the, the most updated graphics when I kill people with online, when I simulate murder. And that, that, that to me is like the annual COD release cycle. It's like a slightly updated graphics when I want to throw grenades and blow a guy up in a bunch yeah, of pieces. Yet it's the biggest piece of media sold every year, so... Oh, yeah, it is? Oh. What can you do? Dude! Dude, don't talk to me, Justin Bieber, man. Don't even fucking talk to me about that shit, man. I mean, uh, just, I, I, I see Justin Bieber sells that many songs. I don't complain. Call, Call of Duty sells that many games. I don't fucking complain. They're making a great product. People obviously want it. I'm just saying maybe they should be more honest. Like, you know. But, hey, man. Um, hey, I gotta man. get going, man. I got a dinner upstairs that's cooling. You do? Yeah. Why don't you get your dinner, eat it in front of the computer, and tell your wife... Hey, motherfucker. Hey, you should bring her on camera too, actually. She'd like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's, uh, she hasn't, uh, prepared. She'd have to get ready for an hour, I'm sure. There was one time we were recording the podcast, and just in case we, there was a camera anywhere in the room, she, like, was crawling on all fours as we were recording <laughs> audio. Okay. So, okay. As we were recording audio, like, we weren't even recording video, we're like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, Joel, Joel. Oh, 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 sorry, yeah. you said there, there was no update on your iPad? It didn't say update Skype or anything? No, man, there's no update here. Huh. Okay. Well, after Derek leaves, I'll try to bring you back in with video. Like, I'll, we'll try again, I guess. Because I just don't want your... Like, Derek is live and animated. And... Well, I'm, I'm sorry. How long do you want me to stay around for? An hour, man. Another 40, hour? 42 minutes. Well, how about I just go eat and take a 10-minute break and come back? I love it. That's awesome. Uh yeah, I might do that too, actually. I'm getting kind of hungry. Well, that's great, because Jeff left. You guys leave. Yeah, fuck me, guys. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Just, I'll fucking, I'll sit here. That's all right. Well, I'll sit until uh, Jeff gets back. There are time zones, man. It's dinner time here. Shit. Nice. I love, I hear Jeff laughing. He's laughing. He's like, they're having a hilarious conversation on the balcony overlooking Toronto, rich fuckers. Yeah, man. Anyway. Um, I got abandoned. And now you're abandoning me, Derek. That's my concern. No, I'll stay until Jeff gets back. Okay. Um, I'm just no, hungry. Don't worry rich fucker who, who owns this condo downtown Toronto, which is is neither me nor Jeff. The dog tag, the dog tag king of the world owns this condo. Um, so yeah, so back to I just want to go back to e, I keep wanting to go back E3 because that's all that's kind of been on my mind for the whole week as I read gaming news. Um, did you care about Metal Gear Solid? Are you guys into that stuff at all? No. No, because they taught, you know, and that was really blown up a few months ago when there was that video and they were speculating whether that guy was like a real guy or if it was video. So I knew it was all coming anyways. So. I, I don't care about any of the, any of the same IPs, man, <clears throat> to be honest with you. I, I, I really, really, really just want something new. That, that's all I fucking want. Just not, not the same old shit, not the same, like, FPS, not a new genre. I need a new genre, I need a new IP, I need new fucking everything, dude. I'm just so, so bummed out on, on same old shit. Yeah, well, I think you're fucked, man. I know. Yeah, no, no, I think I'm yeah. fucked, to, to be I think honest fucked. with you. Uh, not I believe I am fucked. And I don't think, until I get my Oculus Rift and I actually inject myself into the video games, I... I I think it's going to be an outstanding meh coming for me for the next few years. And uh, yeah, man, I think that's awesome. Uh, I mean, it's not awesome that you're suffering, but. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna be playing all these games, but at the same time, you'll probably be hearing a lot of bitching coming from me. Dude, okay, you've Why talked to me over the this? last decade, right? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm happy you're joining me in my suffering, Joel. But uh, but I've kind of felt the same way. Like, there, there's nothing new. I watched almost every game, aside from some nostalgic, um, you know, interest uh, peaks of heart. Uh, mostly it's like, oh, okay, so like 17 more brown FPSs with 1% more photorealistic graphics. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to get excited about. Like, I actually, yeah, I, uh, I can't even identify what I'm supposed to be excited about, about the next generation because it, it's so fuzzy about what, what the difference is. Oh, so. Well, graphics can only get so good, dude. And, you know, they're at that point where it's, it's just so minuscule to my brain that until you actually inject me into that fucking video game where everything I look around me is, like, my whole surrounding is that video game, then I, I just nothing. I don't know, man. Just, it's just slightly more pixels. It's, you know, most years are slightly better. Yeah, and I mean, I, I had this talk with Derek earlier uh, this week, and it's, you know... That's I love that sound effect. Who? What? How? It just happened there. That was uh, the chicken man text texting me. <laughs> that's amazing. Great. Um, but you know, so, so we grew up in an age where you know we came from Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and we went to the Nintendo Entertainment System, and we went slash Master System up to you know Super Nintendo slash uh, what was Sega's fail system Genesis. <laughs> I mean, I did okay. But uh, anyway, so we, we come from an era where it was like, okay, so you've got eight bit graphics, you got big cubes in the screen. And now we're jumping up to 16-bit, and it was like, oh, there was echoes in the sound. Like, I remember the first time that, um, when Derek got his Super Nintendo, uh, early pre-ordered from the States, fuck you, and, um, and, and, and we were, I went, I obviously rollerbladed immediately to his fucking house, and we are playing Super Mario World in his basement. And I'll never forget when we just jumped with Mario in a cave. And, and it heard, echoed, yeah. And it echoed. We yeah. fucking lost our minds. Like literally, we started screaming. We're, like I could not believe that the technology existed, that the sound, that the echo. Like it was already the graphics were already so amazing, and we were already shitting our pants about everything else. And then we get to the, the to the underground level and the echoes and, and 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 but these these are these are massive steps proportionally to what we had previously. So when you go from eight bit to sixteen bit, you're like, if you consider eight bit ten percent of of photorealism. And then you jump to 16-bit Super Nintendo, and you're like, oh, shit, we're like 40% photorealism. And then after, after that, you jump to the N64, you jump to the GameCube. Now, GameCube and, and, and that whole thing, the PS2 era, the Xbox era, you're like, oh, you're like 80% photorealism. And now, the very last era that just ended, I feel like we're at like 95% photorealism. Like, where's Crisis at? You know, where's the last Call of Duty? Where's everything at in photorealism? It, it's almost there. Like, it's just real. And now that there's this whole generation launching that's like, well, it's 96.4% and you look at it and you're kind yeah. of like... Well, I mean, the human eye can only see that much yeah. more, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah but, but Jared's point is like, there, there is no new console or gaming technology that comes out on launch of a playable game that makes you go, holy, holy fuck. Fuck! This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. This is yeah. what Dude, amazingly. In like, Crisis Two, when I like, shot through the leaves, only six leaves move, but now like twenty leaves move from my bullet. Like, yeah, and, it and, doesn't and, exist. There's nothing amazing about that. You know, there's there's graphics demos that come out now, which maybe has something to do with it. You know, there's demos of gaming technology. Like, I'm sure you guys saw that. I can't remember the name of the viral video that was all about. Um, uh, you know the new gaming technology and how awesome the games are going to be in the future, but um, but like yeah, it's you know no game comes out that is released as an actual full game and just blows you away. Like, oh man, didn't didn't you see all those different models of cars in the new Forza and how awesome the reflection yeah. looked on those fucking cars that you can now collect? Where's the fucking race? Where's the gameplay? Like, yeah, the, the, yeah. So that's what I want. You know it it. it <laughs> I want to say, though, that I saw some stuff in some of those trailers that really blew my minds. Like, in the Division... My mind, my mind, minds, my mind. Like, in the in the uh, Division one, the first time he was hiding behind a car and a bunch of bullets went through the windows, I'm sure some people... And he closes the, the fucking door, door. yeah, yeah. Individual bullet holes went through, and then when three bullet holes got close to each other, then all the glass kind of broke and shattered between them, and I was like, fuck, that actually was really neat. And yeah, that was... But but that was your reaction. Hmm, that was pretty neat. It wasn't, oh my god! Yeah. Overboard. 
Did yeah. you see that? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's like okay, there's a detail that I appreciate and that is I never seen before. It's an innovation. But have ha, has it actually blown your mind and and really made a, a quantum leap in your gaming experience? Um that is something that is is overdue, I think. I think there's got to be some technology or some company that is really going to blow us away gaming the kind, of, the kind of innovations that Jared was talking about though was when the art form was still young it's like the same way that you know movies have really impressed us but there's not a lot more that movies can do anymore to really make us go wow you know other than have a great story but special effects used to do that and now we're numb to special effects because it's pretty much as good as it's gonna fucking get you know, and games it, are just the same way. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't say like, when are we gonna have another innovation that blows our minds? Like when the art form was ten years old. You know, that's it's just not possible. Hey, Derek, that's a to I, totally I, valid I point, know, Derek. I, I, I don't know if I can agree with you. That's almost like saying there's no, there's no possible way of ever coming up with a new game or a new genre. It's like MMOs are are very recent. You know, like it's not like a a good genre that's been around for ages. There are new genres that are still coming up, you know? No, no, but we're talking about things that'll make me go, whoa! And it's like, yeah, not, it's gotta be a fairly new thing, a new art form for, to be, to have your mind blown. Like, no one sees movies that make them go, whoa, anymore. Like, they used to. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you know, Derek has a point, but it's, you, you know, you, you never know when in the evolution of the art form does the wow the factor expire forever dude what are you fucking like 16 like <laughs> jesus christ yeah. so 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 <laughs> there, the video game mmos have not around forever man yeah man uh, uh i i want to ask jared about this issue so so I, we, you know, we, we were talking about the whole echoey, you know, uh, Super Nintendo, the sort of blow your mind evolution in gaming, the sort of like, wow, I would never would have expected this. The actual product itself has blown my mind. The release game is incredible, and mine, and 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 a, a, a huge leap in technology. Uh, now, Derek attributes that to to the art form being young, so he thinks that like, okay, you know. Yes, cinema maybe in 1930 versus 1950 was a huge, insane, you know, quantum leap and increase. But Derek is not expecting a, a, that kind of uh, uh, evolution anymore, be just because the art form is not as young as it used to be. What do you think about that? Is it have we got to the pinnacle of gaming? Is is this is this all gaming is ever going to be? Pretty much, besides maybe a two or three percent increase. No. No, man, it's going to be shit like Oculus Rift, man. Yeah, you know, I, I actually do think that the, the, the pursuit of photorealism has guided the more simple gamers for the past decade or two. So it's, people, it's, it's market forces, right? It's, it's, it's market forces, but it's also like, it's the simplicity of the concept. You can show someone photorealism <laughs> knock the mic over. You can you can show someone photorealism right away. So regardless of your background in gaming or your intelligence or anything, you'd be like, look, doesn't this picture look more real than that picture? It sure does. Those leaves have like 18 pixels. That one has 36. It's more realistic. And so it's so easy to get the same public that watches Honey Boo Boo on board with your photorealistic graphics. It's cool. the simplest well, it, 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 the most common denominator approach to selling your game is yeah. look how much like reality the game looks. Well, it, it's also like like a simple selling point, like the mega megapixels in a camera yeah. saying, oh, it's a 20 megapixel or, yes. a, or a 50 yeah. megapixel. It's like, oh, that one's obviously better. It's a larger number, even yes. though the lens quality, the CCD quality, the CCD size. Yeah. There's so many other factors, but it's like, hey, a number we've latched on to. So maybe, okay, here is a number for the graphic. Here, here is a measurable increase in whatever quality or experience that you are expecting. Is that how it is in gaming? And is th th that's how uh, it is to Sony and Microsoft for the past 15 years. And it's how I think that the average non-thinking gamer approaches gaming. They think about, oh, just, this looks better, it's cooler. And I think, and again, I, I'll sound like fanboy, but I think the only company that's actually understood it properly in terms of what's left to evolve is Nintendo. It's photorealism is an inevitability to gaming. 
that like within 5, 10, 20 years, all games, if they want to be, will look just like reality. But maybe cool. you don't want that. Maybe no. you don't want that. That doesn't add to the fun factor of any game. Of, of TF2. Photorealism right? has never made a game more fun. It's made a game more marketable. It may, be, look, it may look better on the shelf. It may make an easy talking point for you to sell that game through the word of mouth to your friend, but it's never made a game actually fun to play that makes you like feel good and, and to give you those tingles that a great uh, game gives you. But Nintendo understands that the only evolution left, because the inevitability of photorealism across all systems will be photorealistic. Maybe not the Wii U, maybe the next one, I don't know. But it's, it's your interaction. How do you interface with the device? It's the human interface with the game that stands uh, that's left to do all the evolution. And, and so, and, and they've been pushing that for like, you know, the last seven years. They bring out the Wii Remote and they're like, okay, tactile feedback in hand. And they're like, okay, well, maybe with the screen and dual monitors and this and that. But it's, it's all moving towards a, an idea that we can keep evolving the way that we play games. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, how we interact with the game and the design. Which is, great. Which is I, amazing. And there's lots of things to go. But we'll I never. I keep saying, but I, I don't think it has to. I, I think we can have graphics with that. You know, no, no, no. But like, you can, you will, like, you will, yeah. like, the inevitability of photorealism. We already do, guys. It's simulation theory. We're living in the simulator Dude, as we speak. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is going to stop games from looking photorealistic because it's so marketable. It's so fucking easy to put in a commercial. Like, doesn't that guy look real when you explode his head? Well, people. With this saw, I, I saw on Reddit some like some, like wolf animation that was like next gen wolf. Yeah, next like, gen wolf, next gen. It's like dog. insane, insane. Like look, look at, at look at all the hair fucking hairs on it. Yeah. Can you imagine you're playing a game and the only difference between you having fun playing that game or not is that when you stop the game and look at the wolf in the background and the wind blowing, it moves his hair. If that is what differentiating fun for, then you you're playing a shit game, a shit fucking game. You shouldn't even be thinking about the wolf's fucking hair. Because you're so busy thinking about all the gameplay possibilities and how you should pass this moment, how you can get better, and all the things you can fucking do because that's a game. The game is, you know, how do I get better? How do I figure this out? How do I think about this? Everything else is icing. Everything's icing. The, all of the graphics are icing. And this applies to like Super Nintendo circa 1992 all the way up till now, but the average consumer will never get it because the average consumer listens to Justin Bieber. They listen to Beyonce. They listen to well, uh, the thing people is, like, hey, let's you you said that uh fuck what was i gonna say you said has do good graphics ever made a game more fun and i'm trying to say that yeah if you had the same game but one had better graphics the one with better graphics is more immersive and more fun i would say yeah i, I suppose well but I, it's, I don't know if but I it, it's not the main price. selling feature is that what you're saying or is it i i don't know if, if having better graphics make more fun although I, I i would i thought you were getting a point that I will, which i will agree with is there's obviously limits i mean if, if when i look at atari 2600 uh that we like we're super young kids on it's like the, the graphics they didn't even allow you to possibly paint a appropriate picture and there wasn't enough to, uh, precision in the controls to make it like sport worthy or anything but i just think that we're at a point now in 2013 where the graphics are good enough that there is no gameplay mechanism that's held back by a lack of graphical capability. Um, and I actually think- and from To like be honest with you, man, I, I don't necessarily agree with you, Derek. I, there are a lot of uh, certain characteristics and, and a certain charm that a game with like an 8-bit style graphics has compared to a photorealistic one. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd way rather play Limbo the way it was than have Limbo be super realistic. But Limbo had beautiful graphics, like... Well, I know it did. But, but beautiful and photorealistic are, 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 are not, you know, they're mutually yeah, exclusive. I'm not saying graphics have to be photorealistic, but you would have never been able to do Limbo on a Nintendo 64. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of people agreeing with Derek in the chat, actually. I don't know if you guys noticed, but... Um, and there's a lot of people, if you look at our straw poll result, that uh, might agree with Derek. The people not in the chat majority. Is, Derek's food is cold. I don't know about agreeing. <laughs> um. But, uh, hey, hey <laughs> Joel, Joel you, you were trying to break in a while back when Jared was talking about the... Um, the, the... I'm glad that Mojo Fax said it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off. Oh, no, no okay, sorry. Uh, Picasso is terrible, so unrealistic. And this is what I'm getting at, is that photorealism... <laughs> It does not, I, 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 I mean, I guess if you have the exact same thing, it's possible some people might have more fun in something that's more realistic, but really game, like game play should be totally detached from the, the realism. It should be totally. Well, the argument I'm making is that I come from a generation where there's only 20 pixels on the screen, so 
you can't have much precision or you can't have skill shots or anything analog and really cool and control when there's 20 pixels on the fucking screen. But once you pass that barrier, once there's enough pixels to, to simulate reality and or simulate all these options that I actually, I really don't think cartoon graphics or pixely graphics or photorealistic Gran Turismo 7 graphics, whatever, I don't think that'll ever have any impact on fun. Why, why is this? Why is this dude so mad? <laughs> dude, you're on the internet. Who's this guy? I just saw. It, it, I'm so mad. This is all opinion. How dare you share your opinion? It's like, <laughs> well, well, you know. This, what are you mad about? I don't. I, you're agreeing that we all have our opinion, but you're mad about hearing our opinion. I'm confused. I don't know. No, this is. This is. Dude, this, I love how he's busting out. Everyone has their own butthole. My mom used to say that. Like, literally, since I was five, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one, Jared. Thank you, yeah. Mom, for that wisdom that I. But but, but hey, but it, it, this, this discussion has has done a, a a great job of of you know pointing out the differences between the opinions of of Derek and Jarrett, um, uh, and which I think are both valid and both have their merits and are Except worthy of totally right. worthy, worthy of discussion, man. <laughs> worthy of discussion, honestly. And I, I I'm just I, I I feel that we didn't give Joel enough time because he was trying to bust in earlier. Um, Sorry, that's the case. Uh, did, I can't remember what I was trying to bust in about. Oh, uh, it's too bad. We I will go back quickly bird. because going in in the simulation theory probably, and I love Joel's, Joe Rogan. Joel's point out that eight, Joel's point out that old school eight bit graphics have a certain charm, and they do. But I wonder if that's just because it's nostalgic for us, or if it's actually inherent in the graphics itself. Which, yeah, um. I'm of I'm of I'm of a position which I I believe cannot be determined for me because I grew up with 8-bit graphics, but I totally believe it might be nostalgia, mm -hmm. because I mean that was my childhood. So like literally like, uh, a friend of mine, Ty, his his girlfriend Candace, she does pixel art. Like, she's an artist, and one of her things is pixel art. And I go there and I see the work she does, and like something like in my heart, I'm like, oh, I just melt. I look at her work, but I'm like, why am I melting? Is it because I grew up? On say eight bit, sixteen bit art, it's because the art's so amazing. Like, I don't know, like there's something playing with my heart there, right? Um, well, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's I contextual. I wonder man. if uh, somebody around the four, fourteen years old enjoyed Fez as much as I enjoyed Fez, you know. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I will still make the stand that gameplay is gameplay, regardless of the art, so long as you aren't restricted by a lack of pixels, so you don't have good control. Because well, we 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 really need to. To you know, talk to more twelve-year-olds that that download Steam games that are eight-bit style. You know, like I, I've, like I, guess what? I'm not friends with any twelve-year-olds. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I know. You know, I I would love to like know their opinion on on you know these games that are coming out that are supposedly for our generation. Do they play them? Do they? Go ahead, Derek. Derek. Sorry, I just want to say here's another like good point too. Is like Grid Two is a good example, where I'm really enjoying Grid Two specifically because of the graphics. Like that's a huge part of it because the racing is racing. I have played a hundred racing games, but the graphics are so good that I'm like playing it a little bit more than I think I would because I'm like, God, it's gorgeous. And yeah, I've played racing before, but I've never played racing that looks like this. Like, how much did you enjoy La Noire? Mm -hmm. La Noire? Yeah. Was okay. It was all right. That was I, I didn't love super, it. Super, super awesome movie. Mouth movements and shit didn't do it for you. <laughs> I thought the mouth movements were really interesting, but the game itself was too boring. It's a balance between the two. You have to have both. This is not a pepper shaker. It's a dildo. Anyway, That's it's a dildo. <clears throat> yeah, it is. People think it's a pepper shaker, but well, it's, it's actually, both. It actually, you it's know, actually, yeah, devices have multi functions. Um, um, I don't know. That little metal top would not be pleasing. To think. to you, Derek. No, and I would say, but but again, see, I, I'm not suggesting that I'm the average gaming consumer. I'm in my 30s. I'm not. <laughs> I thought you were the pepper shaker. I was for a second. Um, <laughs> then I was going back to. <laughs> is that I don't know if I'm the average gamer anymore. But although I might be, because what we might not realize, see, when we grew up, Derek. When I say we, I mean Derek, Joel, Jeff. Um, you know, gaming was a new thing. Like I grew up in the Atari 2600. It was the first system like ever. Um, there were no parents that played games back then, but now we are the parents playing games. So I'm not sure if it's. Um, <clears throat> that's a good distinction. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's a good distinction, and I do know oh. for a fact, although I cannot be sure because I'm just a human. I don't know if it's nostalgia or whatever, but I think Mario Kart Seven is a way better game than Gran Turismo Five or Forza Four. Um, 
I, I think they're out. way more fun, and and I don't. Th their graphics are not even trying to be photorealistic. There's nothing photorealistic about Mario Kart's intentions, but they have a 2013 or 2012 when it was put out gameplay style. They have a proper Elo online ranking system, and it's is that, fun. Is that deep. only on certain tracks without blue shells? No, dude. <laughs> and this is what you learn, man. If you're good at Mario Kart, you know what you say? Blue shells, not today. Not today. Not today. Yeah. Because I've gotten good enough at the game to realize that's a noob's excuse, man. It's a noob's I excuse. want to point out uh, here, Dr. Kaufman said Derek's opinion just contradicted himself. Grid 2, good graphics equals play a lot. However, other great graphics games play a week or so. I I think you just misunderstood what play a lot means. I A week or so is play a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Hey, that's true, man. <laughs> You gotta educate that guy regarding Derek Sweet issues. But I do. I, I have, and it's funny because I actually built myself a. I really like racing games. Um, Derek knows this. Joe knows this. Like Jeff knows. Like I, I used to time trial F Zero like a fiend, and and I just you know I, a huge time trialing racing game passed. Something about my OCD and time trialing just they they're it's a really positive relationship, and uh, yet here we are in 2013, and I still play racing games. But more than I racing, I built myself a triple monitor racing rig with a full steering wheel, pedals, everything. Like I have a really, like stupid first world racing setup that I'm almost like embarrassed to have because I feel, like, you know, yeah, I feel like no one should have a racing setup this good. <laughs> Yet, I'm far more compelled and, as a matter of reality, play way more Mario Kart 7 on my 3DS than I do any game on my mega racing rig. Uh, because I think Mario Kart 7 is 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 uh, uh, a better design for multiplayer and, and it's more fun. Anyway, certainly not photorealistic, um, but uh, good design. Man, if you want photorealistic racing, get in your fucking car and go to the racetrack. <laughs> it's true. Go and die. And die. And die. Just you crash. Like... You go not a drive. But that's where the anxiety comes from, Derek. If you're not, if you don't risk death, how are you getting excited? Man? Yeah, what's the um, point of video exactly. games? Exactly, that's why I don't play MMOs anymore, man. They're not like EverQuest. If I don't have that fucking fear of death and the loss of experience in my shit, then what's the point? I don't know if you're being sarcastic or that. That's how oh, I that, feel, man. I'm being sarcastic <laughs> there, dude. I'm being fucking true there. That's, th th that's I, why I don't play MMOs. I actually don't play MMOs anymore because there is no consequence to anything you do. No, that's exactly. You why can I tell everyone they're a big NIGR, and you can, uh, you can throw all your stuff away. You can launch and kill yourself over and over. You can't hurt yourself. You just, you just pop up over there and run back. Like the, <laughs> there's nothing. You if without Corp consequence. Corp Friday was the was the best, dude. I still remember. Well, guys, like Corp Friday was the worst. I still, man, there was something about that. Like yeah. I remember when Stacy lost her corpse for like three days, dude. And like yeah. I had to sit there and help her find her corpse and how, yeah. how relieved both yeah. of us felt when we actually found it. You know, yeah, just the joy in that experience, yeah. dude. I don't talk about that experiences in WoW, none of those experiences happened. Who, ta who talks about that in WoW? <laughs> Remember that time I almost lost my body? Everyone's like, you mean the time you almost had to run back for two minutes and yeah, all yeah. consequences erased? Yeah, yeah, like, like, like... How exciting! Like, wow, I mean, you must have been on, riveted on the edge of your seat as you ran back to your corpse for 30 guess seconds. Guess what, like, like, in an MMO, like, don't die. Like, yeah, death! I'm like, right. The dying. Dude, like, you didn't play EverQuest. Like, if you think WoW I'm, ever made you say don't die. No, 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 no. I'm, Imagine I'm, a I'm, month of work. I, I, <laughs> I am, I, I, I am oh. actually speaking beyond my experience, but, you know, because I know I've talked to you guys at great length about EQ and about other MMOs that uh, you owe. And the, the, you know, I, I remember when I played WoW for the first time, I was like, oh, it's the world of of work craft like yeah oh here i am like <laughs> like running to my body like doing work and, and they're like and and you you actually said well jeff you have to have some consequence to dying <laughs> and i was like do i <laughs> like, really because i was a noob right yeah but like yeah. honestly if in an mmo <laughs> there is no consequence to dying i remember i remember joel when you played the star wars mmo um 
there were people that were like actually like can you kill me so i could so i can get back sooner yeah. like yeah. oh man i i i've oh, i've farmed all my shit there. Yeah. can you kill me so i can get back to yeah. the station sooner like yeah. all right can okay oh my health's going lower great my health's yeah. going lower great awesome my health is I lower get a free warp back to town it's like body. it's like oh, oh i was going to have to it's run like, it's like, like hit me minutes. with your fucking blaster and your fucking <laughs> spear like like yes, kill that, me. That was, like, like push me over the edge. I could yeah. not believe it that there was an MMO where you could benefit from yeah. dying. I was and, like, what is this? Garbage? And, 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 and Star Wars Galaxies. Me, I, I want to point out quickly. Star Wars Galaxies. Okay, <laughs> Star Wars Galaxies was made by, um, uh, made by. It's such an ignorant thing to say. It was licensed by what? <laughs> the, the lead designer on the project, who I don't do not have any idea how much creative control he actually had, was Raf Coster, who was also the lead designer of Ultima Online, which was the best MMO ever made, still to this day, in my opinion. And so I was very excited about the project. And to show my disappointment, I pre-ordered Star Wars Galaxies. I was a huge, <laughs> I was a huge member of the beta. I wrote huge blog I posts in the forums yeah multi-page tldr things in the forum two rafts saying dude you're fundamentally missing huge things here dude and it was like there's no consequence to death like do you understand what's happening like th this won't work like because of this and and they were so concerned about the housing and then the, 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 the randomly generated landscape and then i never got a reply never got anything the game launched i got my pre-order in the mail i never opened it and to me, it's like, it represents you something. just watched Joel play. <laughs> yes. I still have, to this day, and what's really funny is that I've moved houses five times since that 50 years ago. I still have the box. I have this unopened Star Wars Galaxies box. Of that, disappointment. You know. Of disappointment that they've sent me. And Representing, like, yeah. your lack of beta participation yes. ever. <laughs> yeah, it, it represents, but, but, but I think more fundamentally, what that represents to me is that I can lead design a game, or I can get involved in the gaming and know better than this guy fucking knows. Because you know what happened in that game that I didn't even want to open? It fucking crashed and tanked oh, by yeah. shit that was oh, yeah. obvious to well, me the, the, and to every other hardcore was, game. Wasn't in the world. there it was Penny Arcade obvious. post that was like, it was like, guess what? I don't need day one to be fighting with Han Solo and Chewbacca. Yeah. Like, wasn't it? Guess like, what? what? Wasn't it like? Genius, it's like, man. oh, you're you're a guy fighting for the rebels. Here's Han Solo and Chewbacca. You're fighting with them now on the fucking Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Like, it's the first thing you do. Like, can I just work up to that? Yeah, maybe? no, you like with, yeah. Oh, man. And, and, and honestly, and, and, and the fact that I, I actually witnessed Joel playing this game a few times. Yeah. And, and, and Joel was running. Just you know, running. In, in running. a straight line. And, and there is no obstacle in this game that stops you <laughs> from anything. So... When, when, you have a, you when, when you have a waypoint... Yeah. So you're just running in a straight line? Like, yeah, yeah, when, when, <laughs> when you have a waypoint, because you, unlike you just run no towards it directly. Yeah, you yeah, just go. There's, there's, there's no mountain, there's no bushes to get <laughs> caught in, there's no lakes to traverse, there's no, yeah, there's no bad guys to run into. And here's Joel, and Joel was, he was running, he was, he ran, <laughs> he, he ran a lot, he went, he went up the hill, down, down the, hill. the hill, he went, he went around, and he was just doing this the whole game, and I was like, Joel, are you playing the running game again? Like, <laughs> it's like, and Joel was like, yeah, man, I'm playing the running game. Do a lot like, of running. Like, are you running That's towards your waypoint? He's like, yes, I am. I am running towards my waypoint. Good for you. Uh, it's great. I hope you. I hope you win. I hope it's like no. I hang on. I have to die to get to my move one faster now. Yeah, 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 Let yeah. me just go into this. I'm just trying to find someone to kill me. Right I'm gonna. Now. I'm gonna find someone. I'm gonna ask him to kill me. And Guys, I gotta. Get, I gotta get going. I gotta go warm up my food now. Eat it. Then I gotta get oh, head into the comedy cave to practice my JFL set. So you should do that, man. Do that. Cool. Thanks for the uh, let me on and uh, Dude, to all the well, people that said that I lost weight. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> we will do it again, Derek. I'm it's, sure. If you it's happen nice to be in Montreal, if I was a woman, I'm sure I'd be told how fat I was. But that's nice. That's good. But uh, if, uh, yeah, if, cool, if yeah. yeah, if by any chance you're in a comedy and you're in Montreal, go to Just for Last and see Derek. He's one of the very few Canadian comics that's actually really smart and knows gaming and has cool shit in, about gaming and his stuff. So uh, I don't know if you're much website DerekSweet.com. Yeah, there you go. Plug, plug DerekSweet.com. Plug with plug. Wow. Um, to That's me, it. he's like best friend since grade five. So fucking, I don't know what he is other than that. But uh, I know he does some cool stuff. So fuck it. 
All right, guys. Thanks for <laughs> say goodbye to Derek. Thanks for coming on, man. There, Derek. <laughs> Bye. Later. Can Joel enable his video now, or is it not possible? I'm gonna try. Well, Joel you can try, man. I mean, I'll see if it actually pops up as an option now. Oh, you up? Oh, nice. Bye, Derek. We got Skype logo. How about I call you back, Joel? Yeah, try that. I thought I just hung up on you and then you said try that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck, I didn't yeah. successfully hang up. What? Did you hang up on me? Do, 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 do. Uh, no, my video is... Oh, wait, no, yeah, here we go. Is that, no, is that, no, it's totally working, man. <laughs> Look at that fucking wow! <laughs> Joel in 240p for all of us. That's right, man. It's fucking right, awesome. Man. Uh, what a great breakout, man. It's like you you knew to do it epic style. That's good. That's awesome. That's What's great. up, everyone? You're hanging out in my room, man. This is my bedroom. Hey. This is my bed. We should talk about the poll results. Yeah, yeah. I keep wanting to uh, go. What was the poll again? Now that Derek's gone, it's like... It, it is surprising to me. So, hey, are video games more like sports or more like movies is the yeah, question. Well, where's now, the poll? Where's the results? Uh, uh, hold on. I'm going to link it in chat. You can click the link. Link it in chat. Click so, link, Joel. Sports is 64% with 78 votes, and movies is wow. 36% with 43 votes. Now, so, granted, this is only uh, about 120 voters, so it's not like the hugest sample size but it's a decently sized sample size it's statistically and, significant and it it's is. it is statistically thank you it is. Uh, say, it, it's extremely skewed because these are all pure onage fans and only pure onage fans play pc games and they're all just competitive gamers but 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 you know like i i i would have i would have expected uh, more of a skew towards sports from our current audience yeah, so yeah. i'm i am surprised yeah, you're shocked in the movie direction I, I am shocked that the movie, movie is so high. Yeah. yeah, I'm shocked that like people, it's like, and honestly, like, when, you know, I played Bioshock Infinite, and I'm like, oh, I am watching a movie, and then I have to do some shit to watch the next part of the movie. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah. it's like, oh god, do I? Are they really? Oh fuck, do I have to? Difficulty level low, like you know, just because I want to get to the next part of the movie. I'm like, oh okay, like you know. I'm sure there's some awesome shit, and honestly, I, 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 you know, okay, there's, there's the whole doing tasks thing, there's the whole, you know, having some difficulty, having some, some FPS element to it, but I've talked to you about this, I don't know if you talked about this on the, on the last stream, but how, when I got my new spell, or whatever it's called, and Bioshock Infinite, I'll call it a spell, that you control your machines, got yeah, your new vigors, yeah, my, my new vigor, so, <laughs> which uh so so i'm i'm like i'm like oh, hey i got a new vigor you can control machines and then it shows you a video you you control a machine when the machine's not doing what you want you do this shit on the machine and it does what you want and then i was like cool i know that that thing that didn't let me pass the gate <laughs> is gonna let me pass when i use the spell on it but then i was like oh wait maybe i missed some art back there that like you know some part of the carnival that I might not have seen. So I, I went back, I turned away from the machine I was supposed to use the vigor on and get past the gate. And then it was like, ding dong, like you should probably use your vigor, like alert, alert on this on this machine. I'm like, I fucking know, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I just wanted to look and see if I missed something. The I know, I know, and I'm like, I'm like, can I go and explore something I might have missed? So I go look at more of the artwork, the amazing art that is involved in this game that I thought I might have missed. Which way, which way are you supposed to go, Jeff? Oh, oh ding dong, ding, ding, ding. Like, <laughs> go use your shit on the shit, and I'm like, Dude, I know what the fuck to use this spell on. So I go over. It's like, it's like, could you have given me five seconds to f maybe figure it out? Like, it, it Just was. Think about it for a second. It was honestly five seconds. It yes, was. But that's still four seconds longer than but any it, honey yeah. fan is gonna give that fucking. Someone's, game. someone's gonna, someone's gonna trade the game to some. Oh no, they're not gonna trade the game anymore. On no. Xbox. 
Oh, they're not. That's right. Oh. The Honeymoon Fan is just going to be upset they bought the game to begin There with. we go. Xbox One is going to make more complicated games that don't hold your hand and baby you through oh, the first so 10 <laughs> minutes because you can't trade it. This is great. I love Xbox. Do you guys love Xbox? This is awesome. So yeah, anyway, that was my experience with the game that I thought was so noob that... Uh... <laughs> yeah, man. Honestly, did, did you play Bioshock Infinite? Cause... Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did it. Um, okay. I love the story, and uh, I'm a... the story was cool, I thought. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you that it, that it didn't lead you by the hand, you know. I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm also not going to lie and say I didn't have fun and it wasn't one of the most recent games I actually finished in, uh, in recent years. But um, at the same time, yeah, I, I agree with everything you're saying, you know. So, it, someone says 1999 mode. Uh, holding yeah, your hand. Is, that, mode, is it 1999, 1999 mode will be like actually letting you play the fucking game. Like, 1999 mode is what games were like back in 1999, and they were yeah, actually, which is uh, like, you know, hey, you've got to actually play it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, I don't know if that. I don't know if. Okay, okay, that's good. Someone who <laughs> is agreeing with us, I will not. Uh, no, uh, it is true. Though. It, it, no, yeah, I don't. I don't want to diss probably most people in the chat because 1999 is <laughs> probably new to them. That's like the year they were born. Yeah, but, uh, but I had the experience. Probably. There was there was a a nameless gamer who I had met who was a hardcore gamer, very good in modern games. And we had an opportunity, and we we um, ended up back at my place in Toronto, and I busted up my Wii um, and the Virtual Console because I wanted to see Mega Man mm -hmm. and a Ninja Gaiden and all these classic. These all, like, even uh, Super Mario Three we played Ninja Gaiden because as, I wanted as, to, as, to see as... someone who was who was um, pro or almost pro. By modern gaming standards, and I was very curious to see how they they fared in, in all these old games. And it turns out, they completely suck. Like completely, completely suck um, in in the old school games. And it had a lot to do with um, the sort of precision timing required and, and everything in, in the old school. You games. mean skill? Skill. I'm trying to be nice about it, but it, it was it was a very different thing having skill in a B-movie interactive game like Gears of War versus having you skill mean Billy, you in know, a game like Mega Man. Billy Mitchell right? had to figure out that you could actually go through ghosts at a certain time when they blinked. They didn't, wasn't just led See, by the... Yeah. It wasn't thrown that there, shit? There, 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 like, there was memorizing a pattern in a B-movie and there was real-time intelligent reaction to a complex gaming dynamic. And they're very different yeah. things. You know, you know. So, so someone mentioned here on chat, Bubble Bubble, right? So, yep. Bubble Bubble is an old, uh, what was it, Namco or Konami? Uh, anyway, it's, it's yeah, an it old, Namco, it's an old arcade slash, you know, Nintendo game that is like, you know, cute dinosaurs blowing bubbles and bubbles trap the like, you know, bad guys and you know all this stuff. But it is more skill intensive than Gears of War. Like Gears of War with like guns and shit and dying and war and blah. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like wait a second, this this bubble bubble game is more intense gameplay wise and skill wise than Gears of War. Like, you know, it's like it's such a facade to have this epic war drama when like some cartoons are harder to play and harder to master and require skill and improvement and personal um, you know investment in being good at games like um, it's, it's a funny juxtaposition when you have like ah oh, I'm a war hero ah oh, yeah no I blow bubbles to trap like, <laughs> cartoon characters but I'm better than you at, at games I'm sorry like come on like I don't know Hey, there's a Nintendo fanboy in me for that. <clears throat> okay, so... Do you know what that question means? Which one here? One. Swimmer song going to be used for originally. <clears throat> um, Pibson. Hey, Pibson. Uh, I'm trying to put the swimmer song in my head. Dum 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 dumb, something like that. Da da. So uh, yeah, it's it's a song from the uh, TV series soundtrack. Available. Go to the forums. You can download it for free. Uh, it's a track from our soundtrack. Um, 
it was actually composed specifically for um, Doug's FPS dance being usurped by a swimming aquatic kind of dance um, that was the new craze fad. So um, that was the plan for that song. And uh, Steve Ford and Perno Bozo and myself composed that song for the TV series. We can play it in chat here? I think we can. Uh, we can. Uh, sorry, which one? I, I don't know if we can. Swimmer. Swimmer. If you is it on, no, it's not on the web series. I don't have the TV uh, series. I don't it think I can. Oh, it's, it's on the forums. Anyway. It's on the forums. You, you know what? I can play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want my shit be sucked. <laughs> cool. Not going on YouTube. This not is 11, not going 12, on 13, 14, yeah, 14 15 seconds. Fair, fair use. Fair use. Fair dun, use. Fair dun, use. Dun, dun, not going to be arrested. Dun, 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 not going to be arrested. Dun, dun, dun. Not going to be Kim.com. <laughs> Rated right. our house. Dun, 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 dun. That is Tool. I'm a big Tool fan. Sorry, guys. I wanted to sneak in a little bit. 14 seconds. Totally fair use. Mm -hmm. F.U. Maynard. We're not pulling it down. <laughs> Man, I don't even give a shit about that stuff. I'll put out songs in, in front of Sit Moss like 45 seconds. I don't give a shit. Oh, dude, you're a, you're a rebel. Joel's a you're, fucking rebel. He's like, Joel, Man, I'll put that Joel, shit on for 45 Joel, seconds. Joel, you are <laughs> destroying society. You are like, that's... That's 20 seconds of society destroy, destruction right there. That, <laughs> that is like, you you ought to be arrested. You ought to be. No freedom for you because of. Without a doubt, man. Dude, well, clearly everyone here is in the chat because I played that song for 14 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, Actually, we, are profiting we, we lost 12 people. I should sue Tool. Yeah, yeah, um, no, we for we 10, are... twelve people li leaving when they when it wasn't just me. Oh, yeah, we we sold so many shirts because you started playing that and our profit is insane from the art artistry of some other artists i love this when you guys drunk commentated that starcraft match can you do it again <laughs> what starcraft match was that <laughs> it was, it was were, were we that drunk i, I think, don't remember i think he's referring to the generals match but he was so drunk when he watched it that he thought it was <laughs> starcraft that's how drunk that guy was um you know what man i so i after the last fan chat, um, a guy wrote me and said, "Hey, like I'm in the I'm in the um, Command and Conquer online." Jesus, Command! No way! What? What? No, I'm talking about what you're saying. You know what I'm about to say, so you're. No, I want to know what someone's okay. saying. He's he's in the. He mega says, I'm, I, "I'm in the alpha. Do you want in? I'll give you my login." What? Yeah. Oh man. And uh, and you know what? I, I I I like I hovered like I I seriously have a draft email that's been sitting for like a while. I'm like writing the guy back, not writing the guy back, because I don't know if he's serious or not. And so, so I go to the general C forums and 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 I read. And I'm like, ah, it's not happening. And then I see a couple of messages that imply it is happening, but no one's allowed to talk about it. So all these like super cool guys in the forums are like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's happening, maybe. And I'm like, fuck off. Because I'm thinking this guy's just trying to get my IP. He wants my IP so he can DDoS me and fuck the streams up and Skype whatever. Yeah, yeah, because if you give someone your IP, they're, you're fucked. Like we, he could wreck all our streams, he could do whatever. And, uh, but then I realized he might, he might have actually just been a nice guy. That was like he might have been. Nice I'm so sad. I'm like maybe this guy just wanted to give me Command Conquer Alpha. He he just wanted. Or to, it could just you know. be a guy trying to sell you a fair fair play phone, dude. Never, oh, <laughs> dude, what is this? Like me, I'm trying to sell the whole chat. Fair play so, phones. <laughs> so I, you know, I. Fair <laughs> phones. We come to the same place. We're doing the chat. We we hang out. We set up our computers. We set up our mice. We're like, oh, microphone. You know, we do all this stuff. We're like, Jarrett forgoes mentioning he's been in contact with the new generals. He just decides on an afterthought three hours into the stream to tell me about fucking generals. This is amazing. <laughs> I know. I know. Dude, you know, you know what? It's like, it's like oh, by the way. I actually, I like, I realized this moment that um, there's there was so much news that came out of E3 that you don't know about, <laughs> and then I went, so much news, man. And um, you know what's interesting? They so can't and, even talk about it or what? Um, no, no, it's E3, so it's public. But I want to, I want to throw it there. I just want to throw it there because I just want, I just need to throw it out there because 
So I want to say three, but it might have been four years ago. It was either 2009, 2008, um, which had been four or five years ago. Uh, I was in LA and I have a friend that works at a big gaming company and we went out for lunch and whatever, blah, 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 blah. So I sit down with a guy and he is largely responsible for, this is 2009, and he's largely responsible for the Might and Magic franchise. He's a big player in gaming and at the time he's working for Trinet Entertainment and his name is JVC, John Van Kagum. Is that right? I, I've, now, I've never met him before. Um, and I didn't know, so we had lunch. We had, it was a really awesome uh, barbecue place that we were at. So I was all, eating awesome barbecue, I was having a lot of fun. And, um, and at the time, he was working on an MMO for Trium called Rift, which was a year off launching, um, which has been out for now a couple of years. So you can date this. It's been, it's a long time ago. Anyway, so we're talking, and and um, and and generally, especially if there's a pint of beer in me with, especially with barbecue, I'm just gonna go off. I'm gonna, and I was tell him about my ultimate online experiences about hiding stuff behind trees and and just kind of just going off in, in the way that I do about about what I loved about games and I grew up and that aren't there anymore and this and that and then I start talking about Command and Conquer and just about my love for Command and Conquer and how what I wish they would do and how they never made another generals and this and that and and if if, if you were to make a generals how you have to make it and this and that so and again like uh, you know I don't want to suggest it, there's any influence here this is coincidence nothing but 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 still funny to me as a coincidence is that is that here we are like four years later so this guy leaves tryon gets picked up by ea is given the position of like ceo slash like head creative director of uh victory game studios which is given the command and conquer license which takes command and conquer I don't know Are you years. saying you're responsible for the next Command and Conquer? No, dude. no, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. At he all. is fully responsible. No, 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 One hundred percent. What I'm saying is, is that prior to Command and Conquer Online Generals Two slash whatever you want to call it, before it was even conceived of or anyone made it, I happened to have a lunch with the lead creative director over beer, and I ranted at him for like a fucking hour about everything that needs to fucking happen with Command and Conquer to make it relevant in the year 2010 at the time. And, and we got off, we, we, you know, we, I just thought, we got along really well, it was great, it was awesome lunch, never thought anything about it again. And then here we are years later, and when I heard that he was given the Helm of Victory Games, I got excited because he's a very smart guy. I mean, like, um, anyway, our conversation was amazing. He's a really brilliant guy, the guy that created might magic pretty fucking smart guy and so we just had a great talk about gaming what drives people and etc and, and 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 even the conversation we had tonight about graphics versus gameplay everything we had amazing conversations and then i find out years later randomly through just the the way the business works and the scheme of, uh, of everything that he is given the hell of command and conquer and he's actually the creative director of the next command and conquer um so i don't know how much you're familiar with it joel but if you gave me command and conquer generals two or three years ago, what they're doing is exactly what I would have done, which is to take it and make it 100% free to play, zero uh, necessity to pay, and zero pay to win opportunities. Mm -hmm. So you can't pay to get ahead, and you can't pay to get some other bullshit. It's like you either play the game or pay to substitute it as playing the game, but never, ever, ever, ever for an advantage that can't be achieved by not playing. And they did this, and they made Command and Conquer Generals 2, which is coming out at some point. I don't know. I'm, I'm not in the alpha. That's how this whole conversation got started. But this shit exists right now. And Joel, I don't know, like, you know how much I like League, because that's kind of what I'm into right now. And I, <laughs> I, know how, I know that you know how much I love Generals, right? Every fucking one in the world knows. So basically, this guy's doing interviews saying, we took Generals, we combined it with League of Legends, and we made Generals 2. <laughs> And I'm just like, I don't even, my brain can't process what's happening because I'm so excited by it. Um, except that the whole time, what's looming? Two letters. What's looming? EA over the whole thing. Looming EA. Which, by brand association, we know will be... Death. Garbage. Garbage. Right? And so... I have for CNC three, for Red Alert three, for this and that, I, I, and and even though Jeff was always my stone, 
which always he's, grounds me. I always want to get very excited, and Jeff grounds me. But it's very difficult <laughs> not to get ridiculously excited about Generals 2 when it is A, Generals, the one franchise that we agree is the best CNC franchise ever, and B, it's, pay, it's free to play, not pay to win, and you're a fucking moron if you can't understand the difference. And, uh, and C, I had lunch with this guy, and he is. He's a genuinely very smart, good person who wants to make good games. It's and just I know this for a fact. Like, yeah. I, it's just the question of whether the system will fuck with his vision yeah. or not. I don't know. But it's happening right now. Apparently the alpha is happening. Apparently I may have access to it if I choose to write this guy back. I don't know if I... I have so, so much distrust in, in human beings that I, I haven't written him back. But um, anyway... Are we going to play a game tonight or are we going <coughs> to shut it down? Uh... We're, ten, we're 10 minutes. It's totally up to Zena. We're, we're 10 minutes past where yeah, we're supposed to be. Um, I don't know what you guys got planned. I'm going to go uh, ask, finish watching the, the rest of the season of uh, Arrested Development. Oh, dude. Oh, oh. Here's, here's the other thing we need to talk about tonight. Oh, yeah? Oh, <laughs> oh okay. stop the presses! Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, <laughs> hey, Joel, you, you, you might be on a uh, on, uh, bar with this. So, I've been watching a little bit of Rest of Development uh, the latest season. And uh, yeah, yeah. I remember there was the whole issue of do you release them all at once or do you release them okay, I once per week, it, yeah, yeah. right? So, how was this season of Rest of Development designed, Joel? Wasn't it one big fucking story happening? Happening all at the same time. All at once. You could you could literally watch Arrested Villain in I any know. order you want. I know. Like and it, might, and it might actually change some of the jokes. It might actually make it interesting if you watched it in different orders, man. It it might actually change media because Jared, get this. You I remember you had apprehensions of like okay I would I watch I, I, I would watch the first episode if it came out but all of them all fifteen I would maybe not do that you know but like honestly. The whole narrative structure is designed to be, like, well, like order blind. I would say, like, it's like you could watch episode five before episode two before episode eighteen. Like, well, hey, like, hey, Jarrett, you were saying that you wouldn't like that well, premise, though. Like, well, it's 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 something I was feeling too. I was feeling like, but don't you guys like even as like. Even in terms of um, like other series, have you not always wanted the series to almost finish before you start watching it? Like but, Viking but, season one, you wanted season one to kind of yes. finish before you downloaded yes. them all, because then you just wanted to watch them all in one, yes. one go back. Yeah, oh yeah. See, see, that's the, the that's the Jarrett the Jarrett school of thought is like is like okay, there's excitement when it's, this one episode is out now. It's happening now. This is kind of like a real-time sporting event, and then I have to wait, and, you know, okay, so, yeah, I'm going to watch an hour tonight, but I'm not going to watch 15 hours tonight, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, hey, if I have to watch 15 hours to be caught up, I'm not going to do that, so I watch zero, you know? So that's the school of thought. But but I thought that, that um, they did really well with um, the art form of, like, having... Oh, honestly, Jared, it is a, it is a whole season that happens at once. So episode yeah. one happens concurrently to episode two happens concurrently in the that's, timelines of- That's how it works? That's how yeah. it works. And it's, yeah. it's, it's every character's point of view. Thought, and it's it's brilliant, it's unprecedented. What? Really? Yeah. It, it, is like, it is like, oh my God, that one second shot from three episodes ago is now explained through this whole storyline. Yeah. Like you'll see things, of like random shit oh, happening in episodes and then they're explained. Yeah, three, it, four episodes uh, later. It, it, yeah, and, and, and it's like, it's and, and that random shit didn't didn't distract you. It was just like, yeah, like, uh, so anyway. Um, an, you know, an example an example is like uh, somebody kicking the back of Lindsay's seat in, on the airplane. Oh, that's you know, oh, yeah. fucking true. Oh, yeah. Episodes later, you find out who that was. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. And, and, and but, you know. What? My, my, my one critique is oh. um, they, they made um, George Michael, what's his George Michael Bluth? Okay. Uh, no, no, the, the older guy, uh, what's his name, from the 80s. Anyway, they made his character a bit too fake. They, they, he, they took him too far away from what his character was, the grounding voice of the family. 
Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they really took it too far. But that's just the first two episodes. And honestly, man, I watched the first two episodes. I was like, I'm not going to watch this anymore. This is fucking garbage. They, they took the garbage. Like, where are the writers? Like the, like, the creator of the series who writes most of the episodes, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how it fucking was. Like, he <laughs> didn't have shit to do with the writing. You know, I was like, I was like, wow. And then s- suddenly... Guess what? Now all the all the other characters are in are in are, are in line with the storyline and and everything was great and it was just like okay yeah I'll, I'll, I will tolerate that that character you know not it's being the ground enforcer anymore. Different from the, from the previous seasons, but because they had that that long hiatus and everything, I thought they handled the return brilliantly. Oh, like, they did. Even, even they, all the, the lost footage and stuff, how it has watermarks on it and shit, like from previous seasons, it's got watermarks on it and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, that... Fucking genius, Yeah, they, they, they have all those self-referential, you know, it like watermark-type jokes, you know, and then when, when there's the doubling of the twins and they're like, oh, I'll sit here because it'll look better. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a fourth yeah, wall yeah. break, you know, all that kind of stuff. Which is is brilliant, you know. I I love the series for that kind of stuff. But man, um, it does get better. Watch the first couple episodes. If you're like meh, okay, you're gonna be like it's awesome when you watch the other ones. So that's my that is honestly my my review. We, of Re- we the know they're they're now coming out with in in terms of this whole like uh, watching everything at once and everything. Uh, I I don't know if I talked about this before, but I read an article a few weeks ago entitled uh, binge watching binge tv watching yeah yeah well, i i binge and season one of the... allocated to being like horrible you know like all this bin all these people are just sitting down at once and watching 15 episodes at once yeah, what's no, going on not you waiting know, it weeks it like it's binge the next installment it's terrible for you and all this shit but really it's just you know they're <laughs> missing those advertising dollars they like... don't want people watching those fucking sitting down binge watching tv with no commercials well you know crazy, like, crazy like, talk. like kudos to netflix that says we're going for the long haul we don't see any difference between a year from now having all episodes out versus episodes coming out so kudos to them for trying for trying exactly which i i, I still don't think because i'm not going to say that that was the right way I, to go yeah exactly it's, especially you know Maybe and, and and coming back to the original point here, yeah. um, I think it worked for Arrested Development because of the lack of 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 order requirement in yeah. watching the episodes and because of the structure of the narrative. I think it works to put them all at once. But there's not a lot of shows that that you know. Well, practically every other missing, fucking show that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what you're what you're missing is that whole Game of Thrones element of last week. You know the the episode from the previous it's like everybody was talking about that on the net that next day yeah, you're you missing know? the water cooler man yeah the yeah, proverbial yeah, exactly. water cooler yeah, like yeah. It, it's yeah it's like everybody you know uh, coalesces to the, the water cooler they're going to talk about what happened the previous week and and um and, and even if you you know it, it can't last that way in the future with weekly releases even daily releases or every eight hours or something that allows yeah. you time in between grokking the release to discuss it with your friends to go on to, to the next one um yeah, but interesting to hear that that the series. Is, but that's genius. Oh, it's, it's, it's designed structured. around it's, the idea that you you consumed it um, it all mass. Like that's amazing. Oh, and and uh, and, and it's it, it's especially genius in the way that it 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 tells you about it. Like there's no one comes out and says, "Guess what? It's gonna all be all the fuck," you know, at the same time. You know, that yeah. does not happen. It's like it, here's a show. It's a regular show, guys. Oh, but it's not. And it's like it's like wow, my brain was just you know pleasured by the fact that the writers or the writer. Speaking of brains unpleasured, just because Chuck brought it up, and we'll just move on to something else. Let's do that. Breaking Bad. People like talking about Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad. And I liked Breaking Bad season one, and it fell off for me after that. And by season three, it lost me, and I, I couldn't watch season four. Oh, but then and, the but, end, at the end, got good. But, no, it didn't. But but here's. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. You know, what's, what's really amazing is that oh. um, all of the internal issues I had with the show, they literally centered around the fact that all of the plots, nothing was consistent after Jesse didn't die. There's no way you can watch season one and two and, and, and be a rational drug dealer, 
or a rational businessman or a rational audience member and not go, Jesse should be dead. Well, you know There's what, no dude? circumstance you know in which what? Jesse shouldn't be dead. And yeah. then when he doesn't die and you're like, oh, and then the show writes around how they just can't come, oh, and you're like, oh, it hurts, oh, man, it, man. Hurts it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. You know what, and then you And then you read two years later that the, uh, the, the, the original creator was like, Jesse was supposed to die, but his yeah, character yeah. was very popular, and then so we had to keep him alive. I was yeah. like, wow. It was, it was fucking vindication. I was like, unbelievable. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, like, what pushed me out of the series was the non-reality of not killing that moron. Like, yeah. no drug dealer, no one in the world wouldn't have dude, killed that fucking idiot. Dude, dude. Uh, He's uh, a fucking idiot. Like, the character needed to die, dude. Like, oh, man. Uh, honestly, uh, like, like, like it's, it's Breaking Jesse's Dead is the name of the show. It and might like, as well be, and like, dude. And like, when, uh. when, 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 Walt, when, when Walter starts working with professionals, Professionals! And, 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 and here's Jesse, herp, derp, derp, derp. I'm gonna fuck with this four billion dollar month operation by being a fucking idiot because I like local bands or yeah. some hipster shit. It's just like fucking it's like <laughs> unqualified, like no, no the fucking it's head, like, man. And then like, oh yeah, go idiot yourself to death. And then what? What's over there? What, what's over there? Hey, sorry, I had, we had a distraction, but but but, but uh, honestly though, like like. What, what what's the guy's name who who got shot by Jesse? By the way, spoilers. Sorry for spoilers. Oh, awesome guy. Dude, so, loved his sorry. character. Oh yeah, who's also an actor in The Wire. Ten minutes. Who's also an actor in The Wire. Five. Five minutes. Who's also an actor in The Wire. Eight. <laughs> We're negotiating with nothing. Gail. Uh, yeah, it's Gail. Gail. <laughs> Fucking Gail. <laughs> Fucking eight this and a half. Awesome. Now you just came back. He's a professional. He's no, a professional. He does his shit. Nine, he, nine? Okay. he he would be a 25 year veteran of the drug trade. Yeah. You know, he would be like just solid. And it's like, it's what Gus wants, is what Walter wants. It's like, just have this fucking guy. It's like, oh, huh. God, you know, Walter would have been on board. Walter would have shot Jesse steady, in a yeah, second yeah. in halfway through season two. Like, but it, but it's the son he never had. Oh, but it's, but it's, it's like, his own son is mentally it's, or sort of physically handicapped, of course. But it's the son he never uh, had, but never yeah, fucking like, wanted. If he fucking thought about it for a fucking second, who, yeah, it was like he should wow. just think about it for a second. My like, son has an unfortunate physical handicap, but is a very nice and, and studious kid. He's doing very then, well in school. I really wish I had this drug dealing bomb who's not physically handicapped. Like what a douchebag dad that is, man. And, like, and then Joel, Joel, uh, Joel, that, that one scene where Walt actually kills for him. He goes and he goes, and he's like, kill, like boom, boom. He's like, get the fuck out of here. I'm a killer for you now. Yeah. Just fuck off. Come on, Jesse. Yeah. Just like, when why, he drives his car and kills you, the people. Yeah, that, yeah. You're talking about that, right? Exactly. That he was the moment I stopped watching the series. Yeah, and it's like, it's right like there. why right. did you do that for Jesse? He used Give to, me a reason. Give me one that fucking he, reason. The Hitler homicide scene, and as people, as he's killing people with his car for no reason. No any, reason. It's like, any scientist in the world would, like, it's like, no reason. Sorry, I was making a million dollars off. a day. Yeah, and I started man. watching Honey Fucking Boo Boo and enjoyed it more, man, at that fucking moment. It reminds me of so many series, though. People like... Recommending, dude, you gotta watch this series. You gotta watch this series, and you and you watch the first like Prison Break. Great example. You gotta watch Prison Break. Gotta watch Prison Break. I try to sit down and watch Prison Break. One of the first scenes is like some dude. He's gonna go do a robbery, and he's gonna go break into some dude's house or something. But wait, before he has to do that, he's gotta smoke a joint because you know smoking a joint. Oh yeah. Go on. It's like, dude, dude, dude. What? He 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 actually said. I couldn't have done it unless I smoked up. <laughs> he says that. He says Dude, that in the fucking okay. show. Wow, 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 wow. And you know what? I, I forgot about that. Yeah, he says, he says like, I Dude, couldn't have done it unless I smoked up. We're talking about prison, prison break, right? Prison break. I, yeah. I was going to kill a fucking guy. I couldn't have done it unless I had weed. Dude. Because I was, I was so angry and, and I, was so, I was so sociopathic and I was going to kill this guy. And I, I smoked some weed. And then that convinced me. Like, it, it's, it's, it's at that moment that you have lost 100% of the audience members who have ever smoked a single hit off a single joint ever in the history of their lives. At that moment. At the yeah. moment. Because you know what actually happens, by the way, if you're like, I'm going to kill this guy. I think this guy's been an asshole, man. He's been a big jerk. He's fucked with me a little bit, and his life sucks. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Let, me I, this guy, hold on. Let me smoke this fucking joint first. I don't think about this. Two seconds later. What the fuck? Shit, man, I'm gonna get so busted! I'm gonna get so busted! I'm going home right now and play some Call of Duty! 
fucking, he's out of the fucking scene, and that's reality. Like, that's right out there. Like, no one in history has planned a homicide, then smoked a joint, then reaffirmed how intelligent the homicide was. Like, nobody ever, 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 ever. In fact, I would love, I, I wish, if I had a computer that was like, could tap into the, the, the collective consciousness that is all human beings and know how many murders were prevented by smoking a joint. How many people were like, man, that yeah. motherfucker, he fucked my wife, he fucked my daughter, he fucked my husband, he fucked my son, he fucked everybody I know, he oh, fucked my, even my best friend. I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him right now. And then, and then they smoke a joint. That's when you have. They smoke a joint and they're like, I'll, I'll fuck it, man. It doesn't matter at all. We only live this one life, man. It doesn't matter at all. We got to get going, man. We're going to kicked out. No, no, no. We got to get going. All right, guys. Yeah, Good stream. Gotta, okay. So. We're going to We are leaving by the agreed upon time. We are leaving. <laughs> we're, we're, we're leaving. I'm asked to leave at this time. I'm now asking you to <laughs> like leave. Why for one minute, please? We're leaving 25 minutes past our every time, which is totally awesome. But just back to the point, pot has saved lives. Oh, I found it. I just. I, well, and, you know, okay, let me elaborate. It has never killed anybody. Is that better? Maybe. In fact, there might have been guys that wanted to murder and then they smoked a joint and realized how fucking dumb they're being. And uh, NSA. Um, oh, sorry. I, I love the NSA. And I, also, just, I, I just can't talk about how much I love the I NSA. want to say hi to the U.S. And how much I love traveling I love to the you. U.S. I do. I love. When I go I, to your I, country and they stop me at customs for 15 times longer than, say, I don't know, Germany yeah. when, or Poland or when England. When I present or, my passport, I love entering your country. I oh, love dude, adding value dude, to your society. Dude, seriously, when you scan my fingerprints, like when you took a, a retina imprint of my eyeball, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I love that because I thought you're great. making me safe. You're, that's amazing. You're it's making great. everybody safe. Thank you very much. Go, going to Comic-Con, you are, you are making sure I am not a terrorist. <sighs> And course, that is yes. fantastic. Fuck terrorists. And They're I, everywhere. I do not have anything to say against your current policies. Nothing. nothing. At any time in the future, past, present, yes. any time ever, yeah. I love going I love to it. the I United States of America. I want to move to your country. United States of America. Yes, please. Record Let me in. Calls. Let me in. Record my email. Please. Please. Please uh, let me in. I do nothing wrong. Nothing so, to hide. Uh, put a video camera in my living room. Infrared. I don't care. Uh, I don't do anything wrong. Just record everything I do. And I want a higher wage. I, I do. Thank you, United States of America. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, YouTube, uh, for the, the tiny beast of YouTube demographic that watches our show because we're above the age of 12. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, old Pyronich fans. Thank you, thinking human beings on planet Earth, which I know is probably less than 1% of you. Thank you so much. They are on Mars. They do. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we have to go now because we're getting kicked out. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks See for joining us, See you in Calgary. Joe. Calgary, man. Calgary, nice nice man. If you're in Calgary, we're actually doing this in live. Uh, oh, sorry. In person. In, on, in live. We're doing it live we're in person. Live. live fucking. Next week. So hang out with us. And um, it'll be cool. Bye, guys. Awesome. USA. 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 <laughs>